and welcome to Melbourne on this Friday night. It's been a beautiful autumn day. It's a balmy evening and Friday night footy is back in town. And for the second time this year, the Eagles fly to Melbourne for the big Friday night match. They take on the Tiger, who was badly wounded last week against Collingwood. So tonight, round five commences with Richmond versus West Coast. Hello and welcome to the Melbourne Cricket Ground, an important match for both teams. Stuck on two wins, eight points like four other teams in the competition, a chance to move forward or go back to the ruck. Joel Bowden will be important. Exciting to see him back. He kicked four goals last year on the Monday night match when the Tigers thrashed the Eagles. They were 12 goals to one at halftime. His dad was a premiership player. He looks to be a star in the making. Well, one man who's already there, I think at 22 years of age, is this fellow, Fraser Gehrig. 11 goals in his last two matches, including six last week, and All-Australian last year. Second to Lockett in the goal kickers at the moment. In just a moment, Tim and Robbo will look at the team. Tim, I really enjoy Friday night I, football. I know, you've been tonight, Well, tonight, more importantly, both of these teams lost last week. Yeah. So Jeff Gieschen has got to get his Tigers off to a very good start. I guarantee it'll be a physical start. We see Matthew Knights there on screen. They'll welcome him back tonight, Robbo. There's no doubt about that. He is an architect. We just have a look at their side. Well, they, they really need goal kickers. Guys like Miranda, Campbell, Harrison, Rogers and Daffy have to stand up and kick maybe a couple of goals each to get past that West Coast stable and reliable defence. Well, they look better in that area, don't they, with Powell, Bowden and Knights, who perhaps not only kicks goals, but he sets them up through the midfield, and his good running through there enables other players to get into the game. I think this will be a much improved Richmond side tonight. Well, I, this is a guy I like to see playing football. He suffered a very, very bad injury uh, about 12 months ago and uh, had a bit of a run last week, and I think he'll start in the 18 tonight. Well, there's no doubt about... The fact that he'll start out there on the ground sometimes, he's got to get some confidence back. As we look at their side, that defence is very, very strong. I think they may miss uh, Jason Ball tonight for yep. goal-kicking power. Yep. Also Phil Matera and also Schofield, who really has been a wonderful contributor for them this year. They just have such reliable players. Though. Dean Kemp always gives, Peter Matera always gives, Johnny Warsfold is reliable, and Bruce has already mentioned the sensational start of the season by Gary. This is some of the highlights from what I thought was a terrific game of football last week. Yes, there certainly is, and Richmond would have watched this, and they would have watched the way and noticed the way the Sydney Swans kept putting pressure Racing. on the West Coast Eagles and forcing those turnovers. Johnny Warsfold, he is a reliable. 196 games, 197 tonight for Warsfold. And Glenn Jakovic, another key player for the West Coast Eagles. Well, Robbo, we won't have long to wait now. We'll be back after this break with the action. Now, John Russo joins us. John, always great to have you here, mate. Thanks a lot, Bruce. And uh, as you said earlier, tonight presents an opportunity for one of these teams to really break ahead of the pack, so it'll be an interesting game. And Jeff Geeshan uh, is worried about the Richmond slow starts. They've been slaughtered early, and that's what he had to say about it on Talking Footy on Monday night. I'd like to take a positive out of it, and the positive is that although we've been jumped and we've been right behind the eight ball, in most of those games we've certainly found something and we've been able to stand up. I mean, there has been occasions when we've just folded like a deck of cards, but mm. the boys are showing some character. Jeff Geeshan on Monday night. Mark Doran from Seven Nightly News. Down on the ground, Mark, have they prepared any differently tonight? Yeah, certainly, Bruce, a lot different than last night. The Tigers actually had a secret training session, an early morning training session during the week at a suburban ground to work on their slow starts. They introduced punching bags in the rooms pre-match to get rid of some nervous energy. And Jeff Geeshan has just left the ground having a last-minute word to his boys. Thanks, Mark. Uh, there's uh, Peter Matera, who there was some doubt about tonight. Tim, you made an interesting point on Talking Footy about what Sheeds used to do with the Bombers. And there's been a good sign here already tonight for the Tigers. Well, often you can tell perhaps a way that the senior side is going to play by looking at the reserve grade game. And Richmond got off to a wonderful start in the reserves. They led early in this third term against North Melbourne, 18 goals to five. So obviously Richmond have been looking at the way they've played during the week. I would expect at the start of this game they'll be very, very physical. So the West Coast won the toss and they kicked to right of screen Friday night football. At the Melbourne Cricket Ground, it's the Eagles and the Tigers. It's going to be a big one, this one. I noticed that uh, Braun and uh, Bowden are posed for the moment. Matera quickly on after a free kick in the centre to Morrison. Now, Morrison's about 55 out, takes a long shot at goal. It's right there, chance. Cousins was right in the goal square, taken by Bullis, has a chance to get away. It's a couple of bounces, and Bullis goes up to half-back with a long kick and a good stretch. Taken by Ottens, back to Campbell, back to Bowden. Great to see him back. Kicks the ball into the heart of the centre square. Beautiful fingertip mark. Tigers going forward again. The half-four, Daffy, Marinda. 
The mark there was earlier taken by Ottens and Chaffee. And back now to Knights. So Knights at uh, between half forward and centre wing. Another Tiger back after suspension on this occasion to full forward charge. Broderick swooped. Couldn't get his foot on it. Jakovic, it's quick kick away. The pace is on early here, and the Tigers are showing some signs. Well, it is a really good start. It's important to Richmond. Good play there by Ottens. The tackle on Lewis was fair. Locked him up, kept the ball, and he's rewarded with the free kick. Handball away. Just put Tawny under a little bit of pressure. Back onto his right foot. Not a bad crowd here for this match here between Richmond and the West Coast Eagles. Peter Matera tackled, didn't have the football according to the umpire. And Matera will take the free kick at left half back. And Kellaway's lined up on Fraser Gary. Gasper's picked up Mitchell White. And I think what the Tigers will try and do is they'll probably try and exploit Mitchell White's lack of match fitness. And they'll be relying on Gasper to run down the ground and create. Well, you can't take much notice of the team sheets. We were given the fact that uh, Chaffee, Ottens, Broderick and Bauer were going to be on the bench at the start of the game. And I know three of them. I've seen three of them on the ground already. So, well done. The confidence of the coaches. Kick forward again by Tawny. Good hand pass by Chaffee. Under a little bit of pressure there was Daffy. Just grabbing the ball. Bauer, that's the fourth interchange player nominated. He's out there. Daffy again hooks the kick to the front of the goals taken to the ground there was young Ben Holland too high and he's going to take the free kick Ashley McIntosh doesn't look too pleased with that but it is a free kick to Ben Holland it's obvious that Mick Moleshouse really rates Nick Daffy as we look at the Richmond bench looking on quite pensively he's placed his best stopper in Banfield on Nick Daffy Moore, Turner and uh, Powell were three of the players that we saw didn't quite catch the fourth one but the Tigers going with their big guns Holland Brendan Gale and Ottens all tall boys out there in the opening 18 the kick by Holland is across the face doesn't even score it's out of bounds on the full so the free kick will be taken for the West Coast Eagles there's uh, Philip Reed and Simmons looks like uh, could be young Holmes and Stone too, and Robert. Stone, is it? This is Turnbull with the ball in the right back pocket for the Eagles. Undecided. Goes uh, as far as he can outside 50. Jakovic a target. Harrison. Ottens from the side. And it's going to be a bounce. So one of the stars of the show, if not the big star of the show, is down on the boundary line. Welcome, Dipper. How are you, Thank sir? Thank you very much, Bruce. Just to keep you up to date with those uh, interchange uh, plays for Richmond, it's now Robert Powell, Brendan, G uh, sorry, Ben Moore, Scott Turner, and, and um, also John Rombardis. And for West Coast, Paul Simons and Nicholas Stone, Todd Holmes and Philip Reid. Thanks, Dipper. Have a great night down there, you mate. You too, boys. So the bounce of the ball, Gale getting over the top, Kemp and Broderick. Also, Jakovic getting across at centre half forward for the Tigers. Chaffee, West Coast quickly there with Worsfold, Matera, Kemp. Gee, there's three good players. Worsfold, Matera and Kemp. Well, Kemp's lined up on Broderick tonight. We saw Broderick really cleaned up early in the game last week against Collingwood when Patterson continually run off, ran off him. And I'm sure that's what one of the things that Mickey Malthouse would have had in the back of his mind by placing Kemp on him. When West Coast get hold of the ball, expect to see Kemp charging down the field and hopefully becoming that link man. Quick kick by McKenna. Kemp back towards McKenna. Couldn't get hold of it. Campbell, clever kick. Good kick. He's kicked it. It's touched or through. It's a goal. So the boys there, uh, Johnny Worsfold, the chief antagonist with uh, Mark Chaffee. And there's been a free kick picked out of the ruck contest. And it'll go to Daffy quickly on to Bauer. Doesn't mind a run down the ground. Back to Daffy. Daffy direct towards full forward. In front was Brendan Gale, ball punched away, Bowden provides the shepherd for Chaffee, gathered there, there by uh, the West Coast Eagles across that half-back line, and the ball now with Tawny again, Tawny in towards the centre of the ground, Daffy's got the football, Nick Daffy, a long kick towards the forward pocket, Ben Holland punched away, gathered by Miranda, snapshot by Miranda, forced through by Jakovic for a rush behind to the Tigers. Robo, yep. the, the two free kicks that we've seen paid at centre bounces have been paid by the end zone bloke for players well off the ball, so it would seem as though they may have been told to keep their eye on the pinging type incident tonight. Good play then by Mark Moreno to get front and square to that particular crumb and just tried to screw the ball over the top of his shoulder there. 
and Jakovic is lining up there on Ben Harrison. Now, I would be surprised if Ben Harrison hasn't been instructed by his coach, Jeff Gieschen, to try and get Jakovic out of the play if he possibly can. Jason Crabb, first match. It's one of five teenagers going tonight. One of two players having their first match for West Coast. Waterman, White ran it out, got a bump from Gasper. Boundary throw in. Right in front of our box here at the MCG. So White, who came back last week after his uh, knee reconstruction, Gasper in late there. And a push in the back too. Bit lucky to get away with that. Gasper over the ball. Brigic kept his foot back. And he's also one of the changes tonight. Kemp, beautiful looking kick. Cut off though by Rogers. It was meant for Morrison. It was on the way, but Rogers was good enough. And Rogers wide to Bullis. Got him. Gardner came in well and strong, but uh, Bullis held it. Gardner was able to hold him up a bit, though. Important, too, because Richmond had the loose man down the ground. Tawny away. Chaffee. Jakovic at the back. Couldn't hold it. Bauer. Little quick kick. Left foot inside 50. Turnbull attacks hard with Gale behind him. Turnbull. All good stuff by Bowden. Was able to hold the footy up. Jakovic. Hands and knees. Kemp's handball. Cut off. Daffy had Terrific, to go Richmond. They're in there, the Tigers. Terrific. That's what we talked about in the preview, Tim. Uh, uh, the Swans were doing to the West Coast Eagles last week. It's pressure. Week. Yeah, it's pressure at its best. And already they look a lot better than what they did last week. Just watch the players here just getting in at the ball. They've been outnumbering the West Coast Eagles in the early part of this game. And obviously, Jeff Gushin has this side fired up. Well, uh, it's Dean Kemp across the half-back line for the Eagles after a couple of bounces. He's got the chance to steady and then deliver down the ground. Does it good. Gary Gismar, Callaway looks like his man for the night. We'll watch that with a lot of interest. Waterman into the pocket. It's a beautiful kick by Waterman. Right onto the chest of Mitchell White. White, probably a little bit too far out to score. Kicks to the front of the goals. No, it's going to come back, is it? Because the umpire obviously had blown time on. And Robbo, just shortly ago, we saw Kemp just streaming down the ground. And that's exactly what Jeff, Jeff Gieschen will not want to see tonight. Uh, Kemp, as I mentioned earlier, is matched up against Broderick. And Broderick has to cut Kemp out of the game when there's a turnover or when the West Coast Eagles get possession of the ball deep in their own back half. Well, Mitchell White, we're going to see a fair bit of this because we believe the grandstand right behind the goals underneath the big scoreboard has been closed tonight. And there aren't any supporters in there at all. So that guy is going to be worked uh, overtime to retrieve the football when it goes over the fence. Mitchell White shot for goal. Pretty good kick. Very good kick by White. It's a goal. Oh, by uh, White. 1-1 one, one to a goal. So the Eagles within a point. Daffy out of the centre. McKenna all on his own. Able to deliver. This is uh, Jackson Crabb. And his uh, first game, as we mentioned, high ball, inside 50, at the back, good fly there, came from Morrison, was looking for a free kick, handled by Daffy, has been prominent, clever Tawny, that was good footy, and delivers beautifully wide to Prescott, so some nice play by Richmond at the back, kicks to centre wing, Jakovic strong at it, taken by Harrison, a little give, he was flat-footed Gale, but he did pretty well, still under pressure, got the ball to about 50, Miranda, Lewis, uh, also Holland and McIntosh, and out of play. It'd be good education for uh, young Ben Holland playing on Ashley McIntosh. Well, McIntosh is a very fine defender, and in that instance, he's going to be always quicker to the ball than Ben Holland because he's one of the fastest players in their side. So if it's a long lead like that, then Ben Holland's going to be disadvantaged. They really do need to get the ball in a one-on-one -on -one situation where Ben Holland's got a little bit of time actually to use his body strength. Well, the Eagles have got some young players in their lineup. They've got some experienced campaigners too, and this is one of them. Chris Lewis receiving from Warsfold. A high kick goes out to a... Well, it really wasn't to the Eagles' advantage. Gathered by Callaway to Knights. Knights around onto his left foot. Watch this. He'll use the football here, Matthew Knights. Have no doubt about that. He's just cornered himself. Was going to be forced to kick with the right. Then gave the hand pass back to Broderick. He goes out wide. Advantages with Bauer. Back onto the left. The little hand pass, not bad. Bowden. They're, not, they're just keeping possession of the ball, trying to create something. Chaffee's kick, not what he would have desired. McKenna cleans up. Haven't we become accustomed to this? Have a look at Guy McKenna. Lewis was in the combination. McKenna goes down the ground. Gary sprinting. The ball doesn't sit for him. Callaway probably prepared. No, Gary's got it back. Gary for goal. Oh, rather laconically, Fraser Gehrig in the finish. He has missed to the left. That, in fact, was a brilliant kick then by Guy McKenna. 
He just kicked it into the path of Fraser Gehrig, who Fraser Gehrig was clever enough and perhaps a little bit lucky to gain possession of the ball again. But once again, it was Richmond who weren't able to do anything in the midfield. A lot of good pressure by the West Coast Eagles. And then they forced the turnover and Richmond were offside and they had all the space in the world to work with on their way back. Just a little bit unfortunate that Fraser Gehrig wasn't able to run clearly onto the path of that ball by Guy McKenna. Well, the kick by Bullis in towards halfback. Gehrig overruns it. Then a little kick off the ground has been marked by Bauer. At halfback. Low scoring start to this match. Bauer gets the ball nearly to centre wing. Uh, Gale well done against Krugic. Runs around. Centering the ball up to set a half forward. Neat kick. Beautifully done to Harrison. Harrison quickly on to Daffy, put him under a bit of pressure. Daffy onto the boot in a hurry. They work it to the pocket, the Tigers. Ottens eludes one, back to Daffy. Daffy's left foot, not bad. Centering it to the full forward area. Oh, McIntosh, that's a brilliant mark to White. White straightens up, kicks the ball into the centre. Cousins has got it, back to Kemp. West Coast of looking very, very sharp now. Kemp wide, Waterman couldn't quite take the mark. And Pay. Knight's disappointed, thought it touched the ground. I think you're right, Bruce. I don't think it was a mark. He's a beautiful kick, Waterman. Measures that to Gary. He's going to be a focal point. He had a fair bit of it, not paid. Well, it's used a bit unlucky on that occasion. Free kick to Richmond. Gee, one lucky mark paid to Waterman when he dropped the ball, and then that not paid. I would Actually, uh, uh, the free kick, if not, if not the mark, because Callaway was actually hanging on to his right arm. And now the football's with Callaway. So a bit hard to work that one out. The hand pass away to Prescott, who uh, goes straight down the ground. Good kick by Prescott. Puts the Eagles' defence under pressure. Bowden, here's a goal coming up to the Tigers. Marinda will go in, and Marinda has got the Tigers' second goal. The signs are good for a big match here. 2-1 to 1-1. One, one. Bowden on the run, beautiful handball. Marinda scoring a goal. Gale, out of the centre. Bangs it inside, 50 again. So now Richmond putting the pressure back on West Coast. McKenna against the tide. Back to Djakovic. They're so good together at the back. Worst fold to Djakovic again. Djakovic's little kick too far in the end, but it'll come off, I think. Cousins, quick hands to Banfield. Banfield delivers beautifully to Morrison. His own man probably got in his row, and Gasper's away. So West Coast just making a mistake. They're bound. Oh, that's good. He was eased out of it by Crabb. Now, he's caught the play on his ball. No, he's coming back. I thought he was caught to go on then. I, I thought Dave Howell had actually called play on, but may, maybe I'm mistaken. But if he did call play on, then obviously uh, material was entitled to lay the tackle. Bowden to full forward, good kick. Ottens couldn't quite. Otten still goes back. Chaffee under pressure. McKenna's got it. Gee, Bowden's a good player, Tim. A couple of things he's done tonight and take that mark was just terrific. Grigic probably a bit short of match practice. Knights has got a hold of it. Back to Kellaway. Tigers mounting. A little squeezy type kick to Marinda. That's a beautiful mark against McKenna. That's not easy to do. Came down a little awkwardly. Looks as though he's okay though. Just watch this. The way he just keeps going. McKenna just pushed him with his right arm. Just enough to buy a bit of time, a bit of space. Kicks it wide to Bauer. Who's about 15 metres closer. Now he's really got, yeah, he has. He sort of got to kick the goal now, though, doesn't he? I mean, uh, Miranda's given it up from 52. He's kicked it wide to Bauer. He's probably not quite as close as they wanted to beat him. Probably five metres too far out to make it a good thing. But he's got to kick the goal here to make the setup worth it. Kicks from 48 metres, gets high, under, and misses. It's a behind. So not the result required there. Talking about Bowden. His first game, his ball handling oh. has been, on two occasions, blatantly sensational. Yep. Yeah, no, he's a real talent. Uh, Nick Daffy's had plenty of the ball in this first quarter too, so I'm sure Mick Malthouse will be sending the runner out to Drew Banfield and just telling him to tighten up. Well, Waterman, hand pass over the top, Turnbull, shares it now. This is Glenn Jakovic. Back inside to Waterman again. He's able to assess and then deliver with the left foot. Not quite as good as he would have liked, I don't think. Cousins, good contest there. Back to Gary, handball. White, dragged down by Rogers, and there was ferocity in that tackle. The ball spills for Cousins. Left foot kick by Cousins towards full foot. Push out. It's been allowed, has it? Morrison's yeah. taken the mark. 
Now, John, well, if, now John if tell, in fact, walk, us, talk us through this one. Well, if in fact Morrison was pushed, Peter Carey wouldn't have been in a position to see it because he, he certainly wasn't side onto the contest. So um, uh, there's certainly no push that I saw then. Uh, in, in hindsight, it's a good decision, isn't it? I mean, that's give right. the guy the benefit of the situation there. That's right. But even if there had been a push, Peter Carey wouldn't have paid it from there because to have paid it, he would have guessed. And uh, Not even if it's blatant. Well, well, it's never blatant if you're guessing. Right. Morrison with the football. Should kick the Eagles' second goal. He's hooked it a little bit, but I think it's true. It's a goal to the Eagles. 2-2 right. to 2-1. 14 to 13 here. Gardner, Knights. Little right footer out of the centre. Kemp and Marinda wide. Kemp's left foot kick. Morrison couldn't hold the mark. And with Bruce Prescott. It's out of bounds. I'd like to have a, a chip in here. And I'd support Johnny Russo. I just think the guy had his hands in the in the guy's back. But the fella pushing back then accentuated it by sprawling forwards. There was definitely no free kick, in my opinion. He was pushed in the back. That's why he moved forward. And the no, ball no, wasn't within five agree. metres. Don't agree. I disagree. A defender is not going to fall over like that inside the 50 metres when he's about 30 metres out from goal. Campbell's free kick. Well, the only thing that's for certain is that John's the only bloke that's been out there with the experience of blowing the whistle in the group here. Campbell's kick for the 50. <laughs> he obviously didn't what are you give saying, you mate? Well, metal votes. I'd back him. <laughs> Bowden's kick to about 25 metres. McIntosh at the back, free kick to Holland. Bowden's yeah. taken the long sleeve Guernsey on and put the short one on. And Holland's got the free. Bruce, they're always questionable ones, aren't they? I yeah, mean, the first one two guys. Paid, the first one paid to Holland, I think, was coincidental contact and shouldn't have been paid as a free kick. I reckon that one's the same. If the contact is coincidental over the shoulder in the course of spoiling the mark, the umpires are, pa are told not to pay the free kick. So we could all say it is over the shoulder, but there is no doubt that McIntosh is simply attempting to spoil. In fact, I reckon Holland drags McIntosh's arm down in the end and uh, makes it look as though he's dragged over the shoulder. If it's coincidental contact, as Holland drills the goal, we think. Yes, he has. Um, as Holland drills the goal, if it's coincidental... Co Third goal through uh, young Ben Holland. And they lead now by seven points. At the centre, Broderick. He's got his hands on it early, which is good for Paul Broderick. Wide to Knights. Knights trying to set something up, which he normally does. Rogers, left foot kick, is a bit of an up and under, but it gets to uh, within scoring distance. Miranda, Miranda, he's tackled well by McKenna, dragged down, rushed behind to Richmond. An interesting thing about the way the West Coast Eagles play, they've never seemed to pay a lot of attention to getting the centre bounce clearances. Already this season, a pattern is beginning to develop. They're 12th in the competition at centre bounce clearances. They've been beaten in the early part of this game, and perhaps it's because they do play very defensively in that part of the ground, but they put themselves under enormous pressure because of it. Long kick by McIntosh, free kick going back to... Uh, Gehrig held without the footy, Bruce. Thanks, John. On his wrong side, the right foot. Does well. Yep, to Waterman, another lefty. He's so neat, Waterman, isn't he? That's a lovely kick to White. Gasper got a hand on it. White has been important early, but Gale, good smother. Morrison couldn't quite hold it. That's very good hands by Kellaway to Prescott. Prescott's high ball underneath the Turnbull, and Chappie in a little awkwardly at the end, and Worsfold unhappy about it, but Turnbull held his ground and takes the mark. No, it wasn't much should have been 50 metres, shouldn't it? Yeah, well, if it's after the mark is taken and caused him to the, go to the ground, then yes, it should be paid as 50. Just wonder how you can get a 50 if that's not one. Gasper, Knight, ducks his head. Good tackle. Oh, well, oh he ducked. I mean, Waterman had yeah. no choice. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Bruce. What, what they are told is that if the player contributes to the high tackle, not to pay it. We see him duck. Now, obviously, Waterman still has to try to tackle legally. If he, if he just uh, lays an unscrupulous tackle, then it should still be paid. But, uh, yeah, Knight certainly contributed to that one. Gee, can kick a footy, can't he? That yeah. was a beautiful yeah. kick. There's a lot of sides in the competition that believe that you should actually kick the ball to Djakovic's man because he actually plays off his man. He likes to just fall off into the space, and perhaps Richmond are trying to do that too. Harrison to the front of the square. Big fly. Came from Ottens. Miranda around the body. He's got another one. His second. 
good start by Richmond. Oh, this is a game of footy, Robbo. Yes, I thought that they would fight back worse. I mean, the tribal warfare of all the Victorian teams, when they've got their backs to the wall, the Carlton's, Collingwood's, Essendon's, Richmond, they certainly find something, and they were disappointing last week. Well, they were very disappointing. That's just gone to the sweet spot, about 10 metres from the top of the square, and that is just perfect crumbing on that occasion there by Miranda. And that is precisely why he is in this Richmond team. He does have to work off the pack. He's got to work a bit harder than what I've seen him work this year. He's got to get to as many of those contests as he possibly can. Well, they lead by 14 points to the Tigers. Kemp takes the ball away and kicks it directly towards goal. In front was Stone. Handball over the top by Gehrig. Surely a goal to Morrison. They played that well, the Eagles, and they've kicked their third. Chad Morrison kicks his second, and importantly, the Eagles hit back. And more importantly, they won the ball from the centre too. Kemp got the ball straight away to their forward line. You've got one-on-one -on -one situations. Fraser Gehrig, not only a great marking player, but also a very good crumbing player. And he was the guy, because of his leg speed and his agility, who was able to get the ball out. Not a great handball, but at least he handballed it into the path of Chad Morrison. And Chad Morrison could just run onto that ball. But I think, really, the game starts in the centre of the ground. The West Coast Eagles got the ball out of there. Let's see how well they go at clearing the ball on this occasion. Well, it's been Dean Kemp. He's had seven possessions already. Gale down to Knights. Knights quickly onto that left foot. Up towards Miranda. Turns his opponent in Reed inside out. Miranda's handball. Daffy nearly run down Nick Daffy, but somehow swung around. The right foot snap to the goal front. Back there is Ottens, just couldn't quite get an effective kick to it. Kicked away by Crabb for the Eagles, close to the line, it bounces just inside and over for a throw-in about 50 metres from the Richmond goal. Robbo, we saw uh, Jeff Gisham at the start of the game talk to his players on the ground. One of the players he targeted was Mark Miranda. Already Mark Miranda's had uh, uh, Guy McKenna taken off the ground. He's now got a new opponent. So the boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for Richmond. Otten's been very impressed with him. Only a handful of games coming over in the summer period. Only a teenager. And that football taken over there by Crabb. And we feel that uh, what there's five teenagers in the Eagles lineup, Bruce. Four 18-year-olds, and he's one of them, Crabb, and five teenagers. And uh, something for Michael Malthouse to work with because uh, he has got uh, a nucleus of very... Well, you'd have to say experienced players now with Vorsfold and McKenna and Kemp, etc. Jakovic. Richmond get the ball up towards their half forward line. Harrison overruns it. Jakovic, the reliable, throws it onto his boot, kicks it out wide to the wing, the bouncing ball. And Rogers does well, sees it over for a boundary throw in right on centre wing. That is a bit of a sign of the times, Tim. There's not a 30 year old for either team out there tonight. No one 30 years of over. www.afl.com.au. I love if it when you, you say that. If you had that website, you'd know that tonight, but not, not a 30-year-old out there. Well, it's a young man's game, this AFL football. There's no doubt about that. And the club's beginning to put more and more youngsters on their list. And obviously, the West Coast Eagles always have their eye on the future. Boundary throwing. Todd Holmes out there. Just come on, Ed Bruce, to uh, have a run. There's Ottens having a spell. So Todd Holmes for West Coast out there, number 25. He, along with Jackson, Crabber there. Absolute new boys tonight. Philip Reid also a rookie playing. Daffy's been terrific. Had a lot of touches. It's a good article written on him today in the uh, Melbourne Age by Rowan Conley. Back to uh, Matera. Belts are back. Bowden. He looks the goods, doesn't he? He really does look a star. Third season, only a few games. He's in the 20 or 19. But uh, he does everything pretty well. That's kick to half forward. Harrison couldn't get it, Chaffee, Djakovic, well done Broderick, and Djakovic gives a free kick away for hanging on, Broderick, well played, he came across the Djakovic boot there and showed a lot of guts, and then held his ground, Broderick called to play on, as we see the replay of uh, Djakovic and Broderick, Knights has got hold of it, he's had a lot of the footy on our side of the ground tonight, it's his ninth possession, been very very particular about how he uses the football goes to the pocket he's found his target and when that ball was kicked in by Knights there was only two players that weren't in the Richmond half of the ground so obviously the Tigers have been instructed by Jeff Geeshan that once they gain control of the ball 
everybody run forward and make the West Coast Eagles forwards work. So Powell, who injured himself down at Cadinia Park, is uh, in round two, he's kicked a behind. That wasn't a good day for Richmond. They lost for the first time, and Powell and Knights. The cheers there for Scotty Turner coming onto the ground for the Tigers. Robbo, it's great to see uh, Matthew Knights out on the ground tonight. He's just a general out here. Obviously, Richmond have uh, missed him the last two weeks, not only because of his disposals, just the way he just guides his players around the ground. Blood rule here. Uh, Richmond player coming off the ground, Chaffee. And his place will be taken by Johnny Rombotis. Harrison. Uh, uh, Harrison's gone on. Well, it looked to me as though Rombotis was nearly about to come on, so... They, they, the coaching tactics, Tim, try to just offset with uh, well, they're all size and ability. That's right. They're all trying to get a mismatch, Robbo. That's exactly what they're doing. They're putting smalls on, hoping to get them up against a tall, and they're putting talls on, hoping them to get them mismatched against a short. Banfield carries the ball and then kicks, but it's well marked by Gasper. Gasper is uh, at right half back. Hand pass forward. Campbell, who has kicked a goal already in this quarter, he's kicked to half forward. Missed there by Warsfold. Provides a good contest. McKenna in hard. The ball with Miranda. Dispossessed by Reed. In goes Cousins. Well done by Ben Cousins. Carries the ball in front of himself. And then his advantage. He worked very hard there. The kick towards half forward. The Eagles are under pressure here because Knights will set it up again. Kick forward by Tawny. Marked by Bauer. Little left foot kick. Pretty good. Into the pocket. Daffy's got it. They just look as though they've got the Eagles' defence a little bit mesmerised at the moment, and they have to capitalise on these opportunities. Well, it was a critical turnover. Cousins kicked to a three-on-one situation. Richmond had the numbers at the ball. The West Coast Eagles players had moved up the ground, so they were always going to be pushed a little bit out of position on the way back, and Nick Daffy just running into space, but not a percentage position to kick a goal. Well, he's been a goal kicker over the years, Nick Daffy, but not on this occasion. Right on the uh, quarter time siren, he kicks a behind, and the Tigers do have an advantage. A little bit of a uh, Tadar take between uh, Peter Matera, Todd Holmes, number 25, and that guy has played a sensational first term. Back after two weeks, very, very much discussed suspension. Suffered there by Matthew Knights, but at quarter time, the Tigers have the advantage. They're four goals, five to the West Coast, three goals, one. Quarter time here, and the Tigers lead. They're four goals, five to three goals, one. That's a good sign for them after their bad starts in recent weeks. Interesting uh, conversation between Michael Moldhouse, the coach of West Coast, and his longtime captain in John Worsfold. Gee, haven't they been together for a fair while? Mickey telling John exactly what he wants to tell the umpires. And John is on talking <laughs> footy on Friday. I'm not sure if he wanted to go. Worsfold didn't need to go for us. I think Mick got the message across anyway. <laughs> well, I think that, that was the whole idea, wasn't it? He was <laughs> pretending that he was telling Johnny Worsfold, but I think the message was for somebody else. Uh, the might attend Banner Cop tonight. And the Eagles are well represented here. That's great to see. Daffy, well, he has been going well. The uh, winner will be announced at three-quarter time, $1,000 worth of product from Mitre 10. Tides on the prowl. Go on, Richmond. Raw, 10 out of 10. But as I said, the Eagles well represented one of their young stars, Ben Cousins, number nine. There's Jeff Keeshan. Well, he will be happy. Timber, better start for the Tigers. Good game. There's 4 5 three, one. Yeah, very good start by the Tigers, as uh, we expected the Tigers to do after what they've uh, done the last couple of weeks. But uh, we've seen it all with Mick Moldhouse and his captain there. He just asked the umpire, he said, Tell the umpire, no, <laughs> tell the umpire what is a spoil. Is a spoil like that? Just ask the umpire for me, would you please? Very funny scenes out there, but obviously very disappointed the way that his play started the game. He just looked at players are going for the marks to try to take the easy way out of it, and he knew that the Richmond would come out in that first quarter. Good on you, Dipper. As we start the second quarter here on Friday Night Football, White, Knights, Waterman's handball wide. Banfield on his wrong side, on the right foot. Lewis couldn't quite. Good attempt. Matera, 45 metres out. Hook back. Prescott in the right position takes the mark. Well, you picked it, John. You said it in the break at half uh, quarter time that you reckon that's what uh, Mickey would have been talking to Worsfold about to Johnny. Yeah, that's right. I was sure it would have been about the spoils. Campbell's kick is a good one. It gets to Rogers at centre wing. 29 to 19. Rogers waits his kick nicely to Harrison who uh, they've been looking for, as Tim said, in the first quarter. 
the uh, Djakovic opponent who's been leading hard and strongly Harrison into the centre half forward Cousins deep taken by McHenry wants the boundary line and he finds it Miranda couldn't quite get there Bruce I'm interested why they're uh, playing the, that is Richmond playing the member side uh, wing all the time because uh, in the first quarter they just uh, keep going that side and once again we see the ball on this side as well well I suppose if Harrison's a left footer then he's going to be stationed on that side of the ground and he's going to be kicking in with his left foot maybe that's one of the reasons why you know everything Tim Chaffee's built away it's a good question dip Reed Rogers or oh, worst fault clever Waterman to Crab on the up that's okay to Reed it was Bruce wasn't it he was under a bit of pressure and the youngster did it well Reed's kick he was looking for stone Gasper wider still to Callaway Shepard being provided by Bauer Callaway's kick is all right the mark taken by Bowden he is a class act and he just adds that little bit of flavor to the Richmond side Daffy who had 10 kicks in the first quarter kick number 11 by Nick Daffy towards half forward McKenna and Miranda that contest has been enthralling gathered by Jakovic back to Miranda tackle didn't have the footy goes after it again tries to knock it to the advantage of Chaffee there's Peter Matera forced to kick quickly so the Eagles under pressure around the middle of the ground Bowden does well Worsfold grab didn't have it missed it all together underneath that is Waterman then Crab again and a real contest there no one can really get the ball into the clear eventually Throw. the umpire has found a free kick it is against uh, West Coast Eagles a free kick will go by the look of it to Matthew Knight and Banfield's been taken off Nick Daffy Banfield's now playing on Campbell and Reed is playing on Nick Daffy well it's not Big Matthew assignment for the youngster. fair enough Tim it's Bowden who uh, took the free kick kicked it into the pocket a oh, brilliant roving of the pack by Daffy doesn't he love that Nick Daffy He's going to the tides. Costa for Daffy. What a game he's playing, as he did last week. But tonight his team is leading. The kick by Campbell. Floating, not strong, and marked by Waterman. So it's 5-5 to 3-1. A terrific game here. Waterman comes away through the centre. Delivers to half forward. Garrick was at the back. Kellaway, who was uh, stitched up a little bit by Garrick in the one-on-ones in the opening turn. Back to Miranda. Back to Kellaway. Lazy old leg he's got, hasn't he? Crab, who's uh, shown a bit tonight, kicks the ball towards the line and finds it. Boundary throw in. Tim, you're spot on. That's what uh, one of the things Mick Monhouse said at quarter time. We saw Fraser Garrick there. Once just again. Just sit behind and uh, not punch, not even contest. And uh, that's one of the things he wanted to uh, uh, get the boys to uh, watch. Saw a Richmond interchange bench, including Ron Botas, who hasn't had a run and more. Both of them wanting to come on. Knights. He refuses to just give the ball up. He wants to deliver, and sometimes he gets into a bit of strife. Kicks the ball on a half forward, a wobbly old kick, Reed, who uh, Tim uh, said has got a big job on Daffy. He actually ran with Kelly for a while last week, Reed, which is a, it's a big assignment for a first year. Well, player. often Mick Malthouse tries to teach his players, players that he obviously thinks will be midfielders, he likes to get them and to play a very defensive role early. It's all part of their apprenticeship, actually, to become one of his midfield type players. He doesn't release them and let them be offensive players. He likes them to match up on somebody, run with them and be defensive. Gale to Campbell. Campbell goes forward. And he had a good look before delivering, but had to kick to a one-on-one -on -one marking contest. Players just losing where the football finished up then. McKenna was able to collect his thoughts quickly. McIntosh in support. Kick into the middle is very good. Gardner's got some space. He can go down the ground. Very athletic for a big young man. A lovely long kick. We'll set it up here for Lewis. Lewis, in he goes, and eventually is missed. Well, you wouldn't want to watch that again, would you? It just looked an absolute certainty there for Chris Lewis. And that bouncing ball a little awkward. Mick Moldhouse looking on. Can't believe the lost chance there for his team. That was good pressure there by the Richmond player, but uh, Chris Lewis, a young Chris Lewis, would have swallowed that, just fumbling at the critical moment. Matthew Knights. The inclusions of Knights and Bowden. Matthew Knights has had 11 possessions. Bowden has had nine. It just has had that beautiful bit of flavour to the Tigers' lineup. Oh, Knights, a, a magnificent kick. Rogers running. Bullis providing the shepherd on stone. The kick towards half forward. Harrison over the top. Running in Powell, bounces beautifully for Robert Powell. Can he kick a goal? No, he unselfishly gives it to Holland. And Holland right in front, handball over the top. Miranda, they've messed it up. So the ledge is square. Lewis at one end, Miranda at the other. A point each to oh. 
the Eagles and Richmond. That's a funny old game, football, isn't it, Robbo? Amazing. Tony Jewell can't believe he it. He can't see the humour in it, though, Tony Jewell. But he doesn't have to worry. I can remember seeing him in the coach's box over the years. And T TJ now on the uh, match committee. Certainly he can sit back and uh, leave those concerns for Jeff Gushin. His hair's a bit wider now, isn't it? A bit short. He pulled the rest of it out that day. But boy... Full forwards, Tim, 20 metres out straight in front. You normally have the shot, don't you? Oh, if they're any sort of a full forward, they'll go back and have a shot. <laughs> I don't know who invented oh. the handball from 10 metres out, but you certainly do the percentage thing, and that wasn't the percentage thing. Well, White's kick was too strong for Waterman, so here's a chance. So Samira's just creeping in. Gardner was good there. Back to Waterman. Bowden underneath it. He's got it. He's so cool. Prescott. I know sometimes you get fixations on players, but at the moment, Bowden's just so good to watch. Prescott gets some good distance here to centre half forward. Big fly by Ottens, who can really do that. Cars, uh, Reed, I should say, just gets his kick away. Gardner has had three or four touches in a hurry. Geez, a good young kid. Lovely for, uh, kick on to Morrison at centre wing. Morrison waiting, waiting, waiting. The measures the left foot. White works for him at half forward. He's got him. Still a long way from home. Now, Gehrig one out's always a good option. Goes to Gehrig, uses his body. Kellaway gets back. Kemp and Gehrig. Gehrig held on to. Kemp's got it. Clever goal of the half. Kempy. Well done. Kemp. That after Gehrig had helped by holding back Kellaway. A beautiful goal. Terrific game here. 5 6 to 4 2. Well, you talk about getting carried away about individuals, but uh, Dean Kemp is just a very, very good player in this competition and has been for a long time. Richmond go forward. Knights was the creator again. McKenna does well. Handball by Waterman. Under a little bit of pressure, McIntosh. Went to his left, then his right, then forced to kick high with the left foot over his right shoulder. Back towards half back. Read up high. Gathered here by his immediate opponent in Daffy. So Daffy the crummer, the kick towards the uh, centre half forward position. Powell gives away a bit of ground. Matthew Knights. Matthew Knights goes long, goes very long, and kicks a Richmond goal. He is a player. He has been a very, very good Brownlow medal vote getter over the years, Matthew Knights. He's not going to do any good this year because he was rubbed out a couple of weeks ago, but what a creative player he is. Actually, it's the small things in football that sometimes go unnoticed, but Benny Gale, he didn't take the mark, he didn't take a clean possession, but Gardner was certainly in the best position to take the mark. Gale came across the front, just got his hand to the ball, and then that forced a nice soft crumb in the Richmond forward line. As we see Cousins, who appears to be injured, and I'm sure Dipper will be right on the spot there and he'll be able to tell us exactly what's going on down there on the West Coast Eagles bench. 16-point margin, Kemp out of the centre. Tawny, a bounce over the top. OK, to Bullis. So the Tigers, as Bullis kicks to centre wing. Not for Harrison that time. Djakovic went to go off the ground. Crab forced it forward, back to Djakovic, forced to kick in a hurry, gets to White direction. Back there with him is Gasper, free kick to Gasper against White that time, hanging on. Good duel that one, Tim, between two fine players. Oh, no, oh, it's to White. been reversed. Oh, now, no. I'd like to see that in slow-mo. So White goes to full four, gets Gehrig. Oh, sorry, it, it was Fans and homes are the wrong it, way. No, yeah, no, it wasn't reversed. He actually held his hand up the wrong way, I think, Bruce. That was the problem. The free kick uh, was in fact paid to White there. Um, is that holding and, the jumper? And you called it. It's paid well, for holding. I, I, I yeah. thought the second one there. With it. Let's. We might have a look at that again. Gehrig's in a kick. Has he got it? It's a I goal. Think so he's got it, Gehrig. We'll have a look at the replays. Gary's kicked the goal. So it's Gasper's held there. white first, is he? Yeah, Gasper's held white. And then, and then White's held Gasper. That's the one I saw. Yeah, yeah. So right decision. Well, yeah, I must admit I agreed with you at the time at normal speed, Bruce. So the umpires are doing a good job. They're getting it right. 6-6 <laughs> six, six to 5-2. Back in the centre, Robbo. It's 42 to 32. And it's a free kick to the Eagles. Maybe a holding... Uh, that was the signal, Robbo. Yep. ...instance there. Quickly, uh, Reed onto Kemp. Out in front of Mitchell White. Oh, he's a skillful player. 
and he's an important player That's and he's a goal kicker for the Eagles well done Mitchell White he's kicked two and when Richmond just get a little bit of an advantage the Eagles just seem to be able to hit back and they creep back to within four points of the tides. Well, it was another centre bounce clearance, wasn't it? They had the ball straight away back into their forward line, putting pressure back on the Richmond defenders. And it's the time when you can actually isolate your players. You know that they're going to be one-on-one -on -one because the opposition side doesn't have enough time to get back there in numbers. And Mitchell White, that'll do his confidence the world of good because he is coming back from a serious knee operation. Tim, we saw Ben Cunns come off the ground before. He has a cork right hip and he won't be back on the ground. He's struggling to move at the moment. Well, certainly Gardner has given them a bit of a lift. Grigic started in the first quarter, contesting the uh, set of bounces, but uh, Michael Gardner, he's a man on a mission. So is that fellow there, Dean Kemp, he's had 10 possessions. Four points is the advantage for Richmond. Halfway through the second quarter, Gardner goes after it again, but it's hacked out of there by Brendan Gale. It bounces awkwardly. Miranda left it behind. Well done by Banfield. Gets past Bauer and then delivers directly towards centre half forward Gehrig at the back couldn't quite control it well done by Callaway determined campaigner Duncan Callaway out in front of Bauer runs with the footy and then delivers with the left out in front push out surely against Jakovic a blatant push on Harrison he's good at presenting himself isn't he Harrison My very word. good at making a lead a long lead and that certainly was a free kick no doubt about that at centre half forward there's an attack on the football by four or five and the umpire decides on a bounce. Umpires David Howlett, Peter Carey, Craig Durham officiating. Mark Miranda in picture. He has kicked two goals for Richmond so far. And turn ball up against Ottens. Jaffe snares it. High ball to full forward. Holland trying to get a crack at it. Couldn't. Miss Mark by Jakovic. Harrison's hook is a miss and it's a behind. So it's 6-7 to 6-2. So Harrison getting a bit of the footy. Jakovic probably not going as well tonight as we've seen him in other matches. No, Harrison's keeping him very honest. It was interesting, before that ball arrived, Harrison actually went away from the contest from centre-half forward. He took Jakovic right down to the goal line, but then he didn't contest. Jakovic went out, and it was just a little bit fortunate for Harrison that Jakovic dropped the ball. Simmons on the ground. McIntosh looked for him. Simmons under pressure. Couldn't quite get the handball away. Kemp, as Robbo said, 10 possessions. He's playing a good game, and so is Daffy, who had a magnificent opening quarter. Mark Doran from Seven Nightly News. You had a chance to listen to Jeff Geeshan at quarter time, Mark. Yes, Bruce. He's a man who can control his emotions. Last week, when they were in trouble, he was controlled. He wasn't getting too excited, getting too hard on them. And there was genuine excitement from the players as they went in at quarter time. But Geesh told them to settle down, just stay with their team rules. He spoke to Prescott and Harrison in particular. He definitely has the job, Tim, of running, uh, running Jakovic around. Well, well done here by Broderick. May create something. Little hand pass. Was looking for Knights. Waterman. Handball good. Banfield runs away from the half-back area across the middle of the ground a mark taken by Morrison the guy down there the security guy behind those uh, big scoreboard goals he's got to get paid a little bit extra he's retrieving that football as it goes over and he's going to be working overtime Lewis little kick for Simmons Simmons has got a bit of time kicks across his body Gary not quite fierce enough there crab left foot kick not productive Knocked away. The Richmond defence is working very well. Callaway combines with Prescott. Prescott, they can go down the ground, the Tigers. Campbell's got the football on centre wing. No one really to kick to. He's got to try and hold it up. He gets past his opponent, who on that occasion was Gardner. Well done by Campbell. He may create something now. In front of Powell. Bounced awkwardly. Daffy. In comes Waterman. Ineffective hand pass. And it's knocked over. It was Young Holmes, actually, that got the ball away clear for a boundary throw. It's a game of mistakes isn't it? The West Coast Eagles went into their own forward line. They turned the ball over. Richmond had the ball. They had the West Coast Eagles on toast but they just weren't able to deliver that kick then to Powell and that allows the West Coast Eagles then to tie the ball up. In fact take it out of bounds. Peter Matera who was in doubt before the match delivers cleverly to Gehrig at centre wing. Long way up the ground. Gehrig tries to wait it for Matera and only finds a battle. Matera that's ordinary isn't it? That's silly stuff Peter. He's frustrated by Bauer. Bauer's tagged him tonight. He's paid him close attention, and I think that this is having its effect on Peter Matera. Just uncalled for, wasn't it? I mean, just oh, silly stuff. Deviates and knocks Bauer to the ground. I mean, you can't expect to be permitted to do that. 
Holmes' handball to Kemp. Holmes, a little Guy McKenna lookalike. Gale, it's a good rap to compare someone with McKenna in your first game, but there's a touch of the way he moves. Kellaway's kick. Knights kept his eyes on it with Simmons. Both went at it. Scooped back by West Coast. Waterman's kick. Kellaway gets his hands on it. Then handballs to the space. Wanting Gale to work off. Gerrick Brilliant. Absolutely superb. Handball inboard to Gardner. Lewis tried to go with him. No luck there. Tawny. And Tawny will kick it to Campbell. No. Gerrick's got it. Will he take him on? Gives it to Gardner. Gardner will kick a goal. 35 metres out. Misses. Probably wanted to give it off. Gee, Gary's clever, but a missed chance there. Probably should have given it. Well, he should have gone over the top to Chad Morrison. Chad Morrison was running into the goal on his own. It could have been a handball. It could have been a kick. At the end of the day, it's another missed opportunity for the West Coast Eagles. They really have gained control of this game in this part of the second quarter. And Richmond now have to work their way back in. The West Coast Eagles getting a lot of the loose balls in the midfield. Well, they trail by four points. They were in arrears by 10 points at quarter time. Rob, uh, more bad news for West Coast Eagles. John Worsfold, their captain, is also off the ground with uh, Ben Cousins. Looks like he has uh, a leg injury of some sort. Uh, can't see under the blanket which they've got there, but uh, I don't expect him to see him uh, back on the ground. Hey, well. Dipper, I wouldn't try and get under the blanket if I was you either with Johnny Worsfold. <laughs> I'd try everything for us, boys. You know that. Uh, good on you, Dip. Now, the umpires found a free kick from the boundary throw-in. It'll go to Gardner. And I think uh, he has been an important player. He's just added that little bit of, what, what would you call it, intensity? Well, I think mobility, too, around the ground. He's been able to get the ball. He's been a player that they've been able to use on the way back, the West Coast Eagles, because he does run hard to space to try and create. McIntosh has come a long way down the ground and then kicks to Gary. Well, you'd have to think that Gary's going to get a fair bit of the football, but uh, my uh, compliments to Callaway because he's sticking at his job, giving away a few centimetres in height. Chance here for Lewis, well tackled by Knights, ball spills for a throw-in. I don't think the Richmond side would be too worried if Fraser Gary gets a ball at centre wing position because he's going to hurt you by kicking goals. As we see John Worsfold there on screen and Dipper's still going to work a little bit harder. Well, he's got to work a little bit harder to try and find out what's wrong with him. But I think if Fraser Gehrig's getting the ball up on centre wing position, he's a long way from goal and he's not going to be sliding him through from there. Material to Lewis, bouncing ball, White, Gale, a little kick off the ground, boundary throwing. Goal's hard to get in the second turn. 6-7 to 6-3. Gale doing some good work here. It's tight, getting close to half-time. Ilya Grigic, we saw a moment ago. We've been told that Johnny Worsfold and uh, Ben Cousins in real doubt. Cousins particularly, we know, with the hip. Won't come back. Tawny at half-back. Lewis pushes him down. The kick to centre wing. More on the ground with him... Holmes, back there is um, Waterman, still with Waterman. Torpedo punt gets some good distance here. On the fly was Ottens. Matera starting to get a bit of a footy. Not a good kick, Matera. And Peter just having a night out, isn't he? He's just not quite himself. I don't think I've ever seen the West Coast Eagles make so many unforced errors. We've it's seen it's Jakovic it's run top, yeah. over the top of the ball. We've seen Fraser Gehrig run over the top of the ball. Chris Lewis run over the top of the ball. And now their superstar kicking the ball out of bounds on the full. You did actually at the start of tonight's telecast in the last quarter against the Swans last week. I know the pressure was different. But the pressure was different the then. Yep. Chance for Callaway again. Matthew Knight screaming goalward. Kicks to the advantage of the Tides right in the slot zone there. Miranda not able to swoop on it. Well done by Ben Holland. Shot for goal by Harrison, is it? Looks pretty good. It's a goal. Oh, kicker for Richmond, Ben Harrison. They've had six. Robbo, uh, sorry to interrupt. Chris Go Lewis has also come off the ground with the blood rule, so uh, he's in doubt as well at the moment. Well, the bounce back at the centre. And bumped off the football, Campbell. Simmons for the Eagles. Gets it back to Crabb towards half forward. Picked up by Broderick. Back towards the middle of the ground. He's going to give it up, though. The Eagles get back. Waterman marks on his chest. And goes wide. And finds his man in Gardner, who's away. Kicks the ball to set a half forward. Morrison, big fly. Tigers had numbers. So both teams added here. This is Ottens. Good young kid. Good young kids everywhere, aren't they? Gardner kicking it in his direction. Moves by Miranda, taken by Peter Matera. Touches it on the ground. Back to Gardner. That was the hole that Monkhorst was in last week for Collingwood a lot, and he got the ball on his own. Now Waterman's uh, going to go short, and he's found his target in Braun. 
who's just come off the interchange for Chris Lewis onto the field. Five kicks of two handballs for Gardner in this second quarter compared with one kick in the opening turn. Bruce, what's happening is that Ottens, who's Gardner's direct opponent, he's dropping off straight away and going back into defence just to get into the hole, which leaves Gardner free up the ground. And the West Coast Eagles are rightly using him when they're trying to create when they go forward. He's been a goal kicker this year, Braun. He's kicked six goals without a miss so far. Neat looking kick off the boot. He's got it. Seven goals, zero this year for young Braun. And again, West Coast come back. 7-7 seven, seven to 7-3. Seven, well, in this second quarter, the West Coast Eagles have actually had more ball than the Richmond side. They've had 69, nearly 70 possessions to 56. In the first quarter, Richmond really dominated. They had 90 to 64. So in general play, the West Coast Eagles have really started to match and in fact take over in that department. But they just haven't been able to ha perhaps score as easily this quarter as what Richmond has when they've taken the ball forward. So uh, back to a uh, four-point ball game. This bloke played pretty well across the half-back line for the Eagles. Waterman, Jakovic, Holmes. Underneath there, Bowden scrambles the ball clear. Daffy, about to be run down by Reed, but gets his kick into the pocket. Out in front of Ben Holland and Ashley McIntosh, the ball spills over. And it'll be thrown in in the right forward pocket for Richmond. Ron Botus uh, preparing to come onto the ground. He was nearly on. Uh, a little while ago, but uh, at the expense of uh, Broderick, he now gets a run with four minutes left in the first half. Kemp hard at the football tackle, didn't have it. Well, he played it pretty well. He, he is a very good player, Dean Kemp. He's uh, very aware of what's going on around him nearly for the whole of the game. You'd have to say he's uh, got great control. Ron Bodas quickly into it for Richmond. Kicks it into the slot again, about 30 metres out from the Richmond goal, directly in front. Gathered by Holmes, gives it back to Banfield. Banfield over his right shoulder, back into the middle, mark taken by Campbell. Quickly on to Ottens. Ottens about to 80 metres from goal, goes to the pocket, wants Holland, good stretch, but uh, not a high percentage in all of that, and a boundary throw in about 30 metres from Richmond's goal. Right forward pocket, Paul Broderick, sitting it out. Chaffee alongside of him, here's the attempt to mark by Holland. And this again demonstrates no coincidental contact won't be paid as a free kick in a marking contest and that that was what was happening in the first quarter perfect defensive work wasn't it uh, there from uh, mcintosh build it back over the line seven seven to seven three tides led by 10 points a quarter time and not surprising to see paul broderick on the interchange bench either he's a midfield player he's only had five possessions so far this game and his direct opponent dean camp who's done a very good job on him has had 12 possessions so obviously Jeff Geesham just trying to get somebody late in this quarter perhaps he's got Rombotus on camp now perhaps just in the time on period of this quarter just to run camp who obviously will be a little bit tired having been on Broderick for the first half. Ottens got it to Kellaway to Rogers Rogers inside 50 Moore at the back couldn't quite hold it still with Moore about to be run down he was is he holding it well, he had it for a while. He better be careful. 50 metre penalty paid. Matera's got 50. So Moore's given two free kicks away in a minute. One on Kemp a moment ago. And then Pink for holding the ball and a 50 metre penalty. It yeah, didn't take the opportunity to get rid of the footy. Tackled by Matera. Must kick or handball in that situation and didn't do either. So Matera up to about 50 metres. Yeah, and give him the credits too. He's been booed. He hasn't had a real big night, Peter Matera, but he's in the action. Gary. Shot for goal by Gary to the front of the square. Who's on his own here? Morrison. Well, Richmond will have a close look at that. Chad Morrison drifting down. He's kicked two goals. Chance to get his third and put the Eagles in front. Well, he would have been happy that he was spotted this time because Chad Morrison should have had a give-me goal early in the quarter when Gardner missed him. But that was just a clever kick then by Fraser Gehrig. But a wonderful tackle up the other end of the ground there by Peter Matera. Morrison going for his third goal. Pops it through. Eagles in front. And for the first time tonight, 8-3 to 7-7. Almost a half time. A goal either way handy here. Campbell tried to get it back. Ottens in hard on Botus and it'll be a ball up. And I think Robbo called it pretty correctly early in this quarter when he said that young Gardner going into the centre bounce has really changed this West Coast Eagles side in this second quarter. He's given them an armchair right. He's, he's split the difference at the centre bounces, but he's also been a very good player around the ground. Ron Botus flicked it up. Taken by Stone, is on the ground. He came in for Schofield tonight before the match. 
Matera's there. Knight, cleverly. Campbell to Bow. This is a good build-up. Bow with a bounce. Reed's got to go for him now. Bow inside. Daffy over the top to Gale. Not an easy ball. This will take a great kick. Kicks to the front of the square. Big fly, Marina. Couldn't quite. Banfield was good to get back so quickly there with McKenna. A missed opportunity. I just wonder about Bower's choice yeah. there to Daffy. He put him under the hammer, didn't he? And Daffy just had to release it so quickly. No, he, he went the wrong way. He yeah. went to the wrong option. In fact, he probably should have kicked the ball a little bit earlier when the spaces were there and the players were free. Waterman delivers just perfectly to McKenna. He's a beautiful kick, Waterman. And McKenna down the ground, out in front of Jakovic. Gasper does well, forces a boundary throw in. That's an interesting move, isn't it? Jack, Glenn Jakovic has now gone forward, and I think it's Mitchell White who's gone into defence and taken his position. 51 plays 50, Eagles lead, nothing in this match. Brilliantly gathered by Simmons. Simmons in towards full forward, good kick. Morrison oh. taken to the ground, was that all clear? It oh. was. Harrison swoops on the football, delivers out wide. White and Rogers, certainly the advantage with the fit of Rogers here, but White never gives up the chase. Rogers left foot kick into the pocket, well done, Miranda. Miranda sweeps onto his right, kicks to the goal front again. Spills. Daffy. Just couldn't quite hook the ball around. Has scored, but just a behind to the Tigers. Scores a level. We've got uh, just seconds left in the first half. Ben Cousins warming the bench. Dipper feels that he's got an injury that will stop him from taking any further part. So, bad blow for the Eagles in the first half of this game. G. Reid was good there. Just going with Daffy all the way. Daffy tried his heart out to kick it. Big kick, but Mark taken by uh, Ottens. Gardner's been fabulous for West Coast, but this kid's a year behind him in a few games back, but he's very good as well. Kicks to centre half forward. Holland got underneath it. McIntosh takes the mark. Holland's kicked the goal. He made a poor choice of a handball in this quarter, but then one good one. Waterman having a huge match to Gehrig. Lovely hands. Long way out, but he can make things happen, Gehrig, when he gets hold of the football. Long ball to the pocket. White the target. One hand couldn't quite. Gasper tries to get back. That was great play. Gasper White's got him. Siren sounds. It's all square. A terrific opening half of footy. And it'll be bubbling when these two teams go in at half time. A bit to talk about. Well, the Geese got his way. They got a better start tonight, the Tigers. He knew the Eagles would come back hard. And that they did in the second term. Set up nicely, Tim, for a big second and a half as Mickey comes down. Well, the West Coast Eagles were very impressive in that second quarter of football. Waterman's had a lot of the ball. He's had 23 possessions <laughs> to half time in the midfield. So he's been a wonderful contributor. And the West Coast Eagles just worked their way back into that game. I thought that perhaps their pinpointing of their possessions was extremely good. But they've got their injury worries at half time, Bruce. All tied here, 51 apiece. Richmond 7 9, 51. And West Coast Eagles 8 3, 51. The Melbourne Cricket Ground, Friday night football. Beautiful night here and a very healthy crowd. Slightly misleading because uh, one part of the ground is empty, but the other part looks to be pretty full. 7 9 to 8 3. Can't get closer than that. It's 51 apiece. It was five goals to three in that quarter. But to West Coast coming back strongly. But the Tigers have made most of the running so far tonight. It's been another busy week in news to tell us about. Bridge, that is one of the best views as you come into this fantastic city. As you come over Westgate either at night or in the daytime. And look at the scores if you're coming over there now. It's seven goals, nine to eight goals, three. I don't know about you, Tim, but uh, Friday has a real feel in the city, doesn't it, when there's a big match here on Friday night? There's no doubt about that, Bruce. And this is a big match. I came here not knowing whether or not they get the crowd here tonight but there's been enormous support here for Richmond and the game has lived up to all expectations. See Daffy's becoming a big favourite right. isn't he? What a game he's playing. Well he, he, he has been quite brilliant again this week and during the week I spoke to Jeff Geeshan about him and he said that he sat down with Nick Daffy, he didn't tell me exactly what was said but he said they had a terrific heart to heart over the summer months. The Lewis miss? Well this, this was critical wasn't it because Lewis had the chance. Just watch this again, Lewis he has the position here, Tawny's spent the ball goes to ground. He, he should have picked it up there, and he just wasn't able to grab hold of the ball. And that's a player who's down in confidence and out of form. Now, the Miranda misses Holland's handball to Miranda. 
Well, that should have been a go back and kick for goal for Holland. You've got to do the percentage things. And he's trying to handball moving backwards too, which is very difficult to do. It's OK if you're handballing forward, you've got the momentum going with you. But trying to walk away from the ball and handball on the way back, just not the percentage thing to be doing. 12 possessions, Gary. Yeah, no, Gehrig's been very good. He really has changed the way the West Coast Eagles play because he presents himself in the middle of the ground from centre-half forward. He's a very clever player. He's got exceptional skills for a big guy of six foot five, exceptional speed. Callaway's been OK, though, too, by the way. He's had 15 possessions. He's been a pretty good player for the Richmond players back there in defence, but not enough to stop Fraser Gehrig. That was the first time they hit the front, the West Coast Eagles, when Morrison kicked that mm. goal, getting it uh, from Gehrig. What about Daffy's stats? He'd had 10 kicks for the quarter time, and he didn't do too bad in the second quarter either. No, he's had a lot of the ball, 17 kicks and two handballs. Mm. But he just keeps presenting himself. His work, weight, his work rate is phenomenal. Banfield started on him and then Reid went on to him in that second quarter. Probably slowed him a little bit, but that's still very impressive to half time. But most importantly, he's also kicked the goal and he's been good up around the centre of the ground. It was fantastic last week in a losing team and this yeah. week he's in a team with a big chance. Garrick, uh, last week uh, kicked six, the week before mm. kicked five. He's kicked 14 goals going into this match and again tonight he's been able to get plenty of possessions hasn't he and he's also been dangerous around the goal his value is one out with a bit of space he's just hard to stop well he's a very hard player to stop because if you look at him he's got terrific speed he's got terrific endurance he's a very good mark he's taken more marks than any other player in the competition he's had seven five and six and the marks, marks in one quarter well the marks it. he's often on his own though because he leaves his player behind because he is so quick off the mark the West Coast Eagles look for him. He actually is the reason why they turn the ball back into the centre part of the ground early because he does present him so, so beautifully up through the middle of the ground. Match stats. Uh, Richmond, uh, a few more kicks of handballs, but inside 50 is interesting, Tim. Well, that has levelled out a little bit because in the first quarter it was just a blowout to Richmond. They haven't been able to put the score on the board. West Coast Eagles worked their way back into the game in that second quarter because I believe they actually worked harder at getting the players the numbers at the ball. Glenn Djakovic, uh, the great player that he is, and he's one of the best ever. I yeah, mean, he's three consecutive it. best and fairest. He struggled tonight. Mickey Malthouse had uh, some interesting words. To, well, I say interesting words. We don't know what they were, but well, this is, look at this. Yeah, look, I think, it, I think it had something to do with the way Djakovic went for the ball on a couple of occasions. He actually didn't pay enough respect to the players who were in the marking contest for Richmond. Tried to take the ball from behind. We mentioned that in one occasion where Daffy kicked the ball. It's often the way of the coach. He gives the player a blast and then he just evens it up at the end with a little bit of a tap on the back or a little bit of a tap on the backside just to say, well, look, it's not personal. He can make the earth move, <laughs> he can't. They just shook a bit there when he started to talk to Jack. We're going to take a break, Tim, and be back with the second half after this. Half time here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. It's Friday night football and it's all square. The Tigers and the Eagles. It's 7 9 to 8 3, so 3 4 to 5 2. Now, Matthew Knight's talking to the umpires. Now, this must have been just after half-time. Jeff Geeshan chatting to Matthew Knight. We saw Mickey Malthouse with uh, John Worsfold at quarter time. And there's Johnny, who's uh, got an injury. So he's got a slight limp there in the old hip that now he uh, jogs off. John will be a guest on Talking Footy on... Uh, Monday night. Mark Doran's got uh, a young bloke who all Tiger fans wish was out there tonight, but he'll be back shortly. Matty Richardson, it's all yours, Mark. Hey, Chris, Matty, that was the start you're after. Yeah, we haven't been doing that the last two weeks, so it's good to get off a good start. We're with them now, and our second half has been our strong point, so hopefully we can come home. You've won three of the four second halves so far, so everything looks good being uh, level at the moment. Yeah, our fitness has been great, and uh, hopefully we can run this one out as well. The focus of the boys looked a lot better pre-match, a lot better half-time. Yeah, we're really switched on tonight, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can come through the four points. Okay, and you won't be long away. How's that scar going? Give us a look at that. Next week, I think. Yeah. Not bad. OK, get back in the box, Matty. Thanks for that. Thanks, and Johnny, just quickly, you've been in the umpiring situation. Would you take any notice when a captain comes in and speaks to you at quarter time or half time or any time during the game? No. So I mean nothing to you as an umpire? No, no, just uh, almost be a team tactic in most situations. We construe that. 7 9 to 8 3 as we start the second half here of Friday Night Football at the G. Good crowd here, terrific first half of football. Nothing much between them. Richmond has made most of the running. They've led by almost three goals on a couple of occasions. But the Eagles came back strongly. Bullets has kicked wide to Gale. Now he measures the kick to Kellaway. Kellaway, a lot of posses. 
inside, didn't have a lot of legs on that kick, and Kemp's been able to take the mark in front of Rombotis, who's probably got the job of running with him. To McKenna, McKenna too far for Gardner, taken by Gardner, he's got Miranda, he only has to be accurate, he is, Miranda likes to play on, he does, this will bring the house down if he can go, it's a poor kick across the face, a goal to the pocket, McIntosh there, out of play. He kicked four goals, nine, Miranda, going into tonight's match, and he has kicked two goals tonight. He's an unfashionable player, that Paul Bullis, uh, Bruce, isn't he? But by gee, he keeps on uh, being a reliable part of that Richmond defence. He's certainly handy. Chance here, it should be a goal, Powell. Well done, Djakovic. We saw uh, Malthouse and Djakovic talking before half-time. That was a good start, foul too slow. Handball away, back to Djakovic. Fired up for the second half. Tries to get the kick away. Bauer hangs in, though. Well done. Powell, who probably is kicking himself for not kicking a goal a moment again. And Djakovic squares it up and gets it to Simmons. Yes, yeah, Simmons closely uh, contested there by Campbell. 50 metre penalty against Campbell. And the reason that was paid, Robbo, is that Campbell really did deliberately run well over the mark then. And if he deliberately runs, or if he's construed as deliberately running well over the mark, the umpire will pay 50. So that brings Simmons right towards the middle of the ground, out wide to Banfield. He's marked about 60 metres from the Eagles' goal. They've got no one to kick to down the field. Well, that's going to be the worry, isn't it? Richmond certainly have ac action, action, action across their half-forward and full-forward line. They're solely looking for the high flyer in Gehrig on their full-forward line. That mark not quite taken. I think it's Morrison, is it, that's it's been, been uh, written yeah. into the ground? They had to go very, very wide, though, the West Coast Eagles, because Pull Bullis was playing as a spare man. He was guarding the dangerous space in the central part of the ground. The only space on offer was out wide. And now Chad Morrison is going to have to kick from a low percentage position. The mark may have been paid, John. Yeah, the mark was paid, Robbo. Well, Morrison, who has kicked three goals, three of the Eagles' eight goals, going for his fourth, not a bad kick, touched right on the line. And the first score of the second half, a behind kick by Chad Morrison for the West Coast Eagles. They lead by that margin. The Richmond bench, Chaffee, Ottens, Moore, Turner, as Knights prepares to kick it back in for the Tigers. He's been good at pinpointing his kicks too, Knights, tonight. Gone to Rogers on a number of occasions. Let's see if he goes to him again. Short to Tawny. Got Bow very wide. He won't go there now. This kick important here, isn't it? That uh, they can clear the area from Richmond's point of view. Wide. Now the target Gasper. He's got him. Good mark. Good lead and a good kick. Gives it off to Broderick. Normally delivers. He does. Gets it to centre wing. Taken by Rogers, running player, kicks the ball very high. Holland coming out hard, bouncing ball. Marinda held on to, no free kick, he was stiff. Banfield's away. And oh. cut off, cut off cleverly by Campbell. Marinda good, just kept in the chase, yeah. grabbed him by the jumper, urgently made Banfield throw it onto his boot. It yeah. was just enough pressure, wasn't it? Yep. He just felt the heat of the player there. Kicked the first goal of the match tonight, Campbell. And normally pretty accurate, this fellow. Richmond have made a change. Press got off and Turner back into the fray, Bruce. Wayne Campbell not wanting to go round onto his line of kick and uh, Dave Howlett just stressing to him that he'll be the judge of when he's on his line of kick. I think Jeff Gushin's probably conceded now that Chad Morrison's a marking player and that's why he's brought Turner onto him. So an important kick by Campbell. He's delivered the goods. Bruce, I think I mentioned last week about his reliability at kicking goals. Now, the field umpire, on the, yeah, he's, he is, he's, he's good. He's a very consistent goal kicker. He's kicked 7-1, I think, for the year, Robbo. He's hardly missed. I think we're going to get a goal here, Robbo. Watch this one. Thank you. <laughs> Wayne Campbell's second goal has wrenched back the lead for the Tigers. Just five points. Matera tries to crash his way through. Well tackled by Gale. Gathered by Campbell. Out wide, Bauer trying to run onto it. Braun, the two number 10s, Braun and Daffy. Still Michael Braun, well tackled. The tackle was Rogers. The ball spills wide, close to the line. Powell, who's been active, owns the tackler. The umpire, the central umpire, has given the all clear for a boundary throw in. Players look up anxiously. That tackle by Rogers was a beauty. Yeah, now if uh, if it was deemed that he'd had an opportunity to dispose of the ball first, then uh, would have been penalised for incorrect disposal. Reed gets it away to Matera. Matera's kick straight towards goal. At the back, Lewis, it's a mark. 
Certainly a mark to Lewis from behind Tawny. Well, just did a bit with his body, didn't he? Yeah. He did enough, though, didn't he? Yeah. He really, he just did enough. But Tawny rushed out at the ball. He did all the right things. He played in front of Lewis and the ball, perhaps judgment, perhaps just a bit of experience on that occasion. But now Lewis going back to line up for a goal. He's kicked it behind. Wouldn't have any trouble, you wouldn't think, with, with the distance. He's hit the post. So two behinds against the name of uh, Chris Lewis. He's had two unlucky behinds, hasn't he? I mean, he, yeah. the, the first one's very celebrated, wasn't it? He should have two goals to his name now, as we see Ilya Grichich on the bench and also Stone. And there's a couple of injured players on the bench too, so that may be a telling factor late in this game for the West Coast Eagles with Johnny Warsfold and also Cousins, both injured. Well done by Gale. Mark the kick in. Player on his own in the middle of the ground. They go down here with Rogers. Lovely long kick. Out in front, Bowden couldn't take the mark. McKenna well tackled by Miranda. Bowden back into the action. Back to Daffy. The little kick by Daffy. Good vision, and he's got it. Luckily for Robert Powell, he nearly let it slip from his grasp. He's going to improve the angle. Goes back to Daffy. It won't be allowed. He has to start from his, his correct line of kick, Robbo, and in that case, he obviously had improved the angle, so uh, the umpire will blow time on. Having another look at uh, what Robert, Fa uh, Robert Powell was up to, and he eventually did find a player in a better position. That's John Rombotis, and he will shoot for goal. So he made hard work of this, didn't he? Just watch this. He's kept his eye on the ball. Maybe he just took his eye off at the last minute and think, almost fumbled that. Do you think there might have been some... Uh, tremblings from someone coming well, from it's like, it's like taking a cricket catch out in the deep, isn't it? you just got too much time to think about it. Exactly. Rob Botus with the football. The player on the mark is about a uh, little over 40 metres from goal. Good kick by Rob Botus. Excellent kick by Rob Botus. Tigers have got a goal. Handy break for the Tigers. Not a lot in it though. 9985. They've kicked the two goals after half time. West Coast to come back now. Kemp Excellent opening half. Delivers out wide. Wanting Morrison's got him. He's up the ground. He's kicked three goals in the first half. Looks with Gary. They're a big chance to kick a heap of goals tonight. So White's kicked a couple as well. Morrison just squares it to Gardner. Then kicks to the pocket. And the Richmond player fell over Kellaway and left Gary on his own. But well, he's in a good position to kick no, he's a goal from shot the goal from there. Should. He's kicking with his left foot in. He was the only player that Gardner could have gone to, too. They were 3-1 deep in their forward line, the West Coast Eagles. Bulls had dropped down, Gale had dropped down, and there was only really Fraser Gehrig to kick the ball to, and at the critical time, Kellaway hit the deck. So he's well positioned for a lefty. He tries to steer it and didn't really kick through it, and that's a poor attempt by Gehrig, a behind. He described it well then, Bruce. He did try and steer it. He didn't kick through the ball. It wasn't a deliberate long-kicking action. He just tried to guide the ball down. And when you do, you probably don't have enough momentum actually swinging with your leg. And on that occasion, the ball just went out to the left. Interesting too, Chad Morrison, since he's been picked up by Turner, he's tried to play a different sort of game because he knows perhaps Turner may be a little bit easier to beat if he drags him up the ground. That's exactly what he's done. Turner kicks it long and hard. Back to a pack, handball by Simmons out wide. Looking for a crab. Good tackle on him. And he's gone up at the kick. Free kick to Rogers, who's uh, having a reasonable game. That's Jackson Crabb in his first match. Got a couple of kicks early, and Rogers is able to deliver the ball to centre wing, and the Tigers are away. Gasper's high ball. See the slow mo replay really showed the effectiveness of that tackle by Matthew Rogers. Harrison working hard. Turnbull there for the Eagles. Marinda over the top, and uh, with Richmond leading by nine points halfway through the third term, the umpire will bounce about 45 metres from the. Uh, Richmond goal. That's uh, Mickey Moldhouse in the coach's box. The new coach's box here in the Great Southern Stand for the visiting coaching staff. Kick into the pocket just in front of Ben Holland. It may have gone out on the fall, did it? No. Well, Ashley McIntosh thought it did. The man the umpire, and he was a fair way away, but he decided that it will be thrown in. Robbo, is there anyone in the competition quicker at getting the ball to their boot than Nick Daffy? I think he's very, very good. Very efficient. Right foot or left foot. No drama with that. He's got another chance here, but he's well harassed there by Reed. 
the ball spills, McIntosh, and being held didn't have yeah. it, Philip Reid. Reid deemed not to have actually taken possession of the footy then, and uh, certainly played it well if that was the case. And he's tried very hard, he's concentrated very well, because when Daffy gets the ball, he has been right with him. Out wide, Gehrig looking for the free kick, he's going to get it too. Against Callaway, looking to play on, does so, Turnbull, he had two options. Went to the player closer to the middle of the ground. The kick towards half forward. Simmons misses it. Out comes Tawny. Shares the ball with Rogers. In turn, Knights. Good vision, Knights. Out wide to Bauer. Bauer's little left foot kick. Player on his own. At half forward is Powell. Ball six for that player. Off his left, Banfield. Great smother. Great contest. Banfield's been the key player in that little passenger play. Spills for Bowden. Gets it back to Bauer. Bowers' little left foot kick into the pocket has been well marked. No, has it been paid? Oh, boy, play on. It's spilled out for a boundary throw in. The whistle will be annoyed with that. The whistle was certainly on the way up to the mouth. Gee, the crowd rose as one there, Timmy. They wanted that mark paid. Look at Daffy, and look at the crowd. Really, Daffy's, Daffy's never Daffy's controlled it. Daffy's blaming, him so, uh, blaming the umpire there, but it's his mistake. It's a chess Absolutely. mark, and players at this level should be able to take that and uh, hang on to it like a cricket catch. He Go the, for it, Johnny. He got the kick away. Good on you, Dipper. Harrison's <laughs> running out of bounds. How did you see it down there, Dip? No, Mark, John was right. He made the mistake, not and, the umpire. Actually, on that point of chess marks, this season, I can't remember a season when I've seen so many chess marks drop. I spoke to Jeff Geeshan about it during the week. He agreed and he thought perhaps what they're doing now in training is they're taking the ball in their hands and players have perhaps forgotten the art of actually being able to take the ball in their chest and their arms are getting in the way as they take half a, you know, half a ball in their hand and half a ball in their chest. Interesting observation. So uh, one to watch for. Braun gets it. Reed's quick kick away. West Coast holding strong at the back. Bullis, oh, not good. Not good at all. Gardner, he misses his target. Morrison couldn't get it. Oh. Is that a trip to Bauer? No. Oh. Hey. Well, Chris. Oh, look at that again. If, if, there, if it is a deliberate trip by foot, then it is a free kick, a 50 metre penalty, and a report. Let's have a look. We'll have another look. Let's watch this again. Well, well could have been going for the footy, but uh, certainly be open to a lot of conjecture, I reckon, that one. Don't want to put any, any nails in anybody's coffin. Knights to Campbell. That was a really interesting one, wasn't it? McKenna had a half a hope. Gee, he does look a bit like him, that kid, that Holmes. McKenna, he runs in a very similar way. Turnbull overran it. Prescott, can he get it in board? He runs away. This is a big moment for the Tigers. A float at a centre-half for Djakovic at the back. And he holds the mark. I wonder if it's still ringing in his ears, the, the conversation that he had with Vic Boldhouse. Well, it wasn't a conversation. It was a dirty old rev by the coach as they broke for the half-time interval. Kicked by uh, Ryan Turnbull. And a holding incident. Is it going to go to uh, Richmond? It's going to Gary. Callaway appealing for it. But the free kick awarded to the West Coast forward, Fraser Gehrig. In towards centre-half forward, we'll have another look at this. And it didn't look as though there was much in it. Six, um, one, half a dozen the other, Robbo. Flying shot at goal by Gardner has missed. Tim, just talking about a reaction to, to captains coming up and talking to you, the one thing that you wouldn't want as a coach of umpires is for, for umpires to react to that sort of comment. Yeah. And you would hope that what we're seeing now, a few soft free kicks being paid, is not a reaction to what's been said to them. It's almost getting to the stage of intimidation, though, isn't it, where the coaches send their captains to the huddle or to the umpires... You know, monotonous regularity. Each quarter time, each half time, each three quarter time break. Good mark by Campbell. Rogers' kick was perfect after Gasper's handball. Knights in board to centre half forward. Bouncing ball now as Holland brought it to ground. Chance for Campbell. He tripped over Holland's hands. Powell, a clever, pushes forward. Campbell on the up. Couldn't quite get it to Holland. Kemp gets back. Frenetic footy for free kick. Kemp didn't get it. Maybe the advantage was given. Holmes' little kick. Turnbull tries to belt it away, slaps it to the boundary line and finds it. It's a real stalemate for the moment, isn't it? It's just a great contest. Oh, it's, it's a brilliant contest at the moment. Four points uh, to the Eagles in this third term and two goals straight to Richmond. So not much on the scoreboard. And they are really testing each other out. Brendan Gale gets the front posse. Turnbull gathered by Braun. Hand pass. Maybe tried for Matera, eventually found that player. Across his left shoulder, good distance with the kick. 
bounces awkwardly, favours Lewis. Lewis, a good contest physically here with Tawny. Can't control the footy. Frustration for Chris Lewis. Yet to kick a goal. He's had uh, two chances, one down the uh, left-hand end of screen in the second term where he probably really should have grasped the opportunity there and he hit the post earlier in this quarter. Eight points is the margin in favour of Richmond. Turnbull and Gale. Physical contest there in the ruck. Matera basically threw it away. Well, that's, I, and I agree with you, Robbo. If he didn't have it, how did he get rid of it? Well, <laughs> Because he had it before the tackle. And he's looking for a 50-metre penalty. We'll he's got that footy there. He has got it. Yeah, you're right. Well, did the tackle force the ball? That's holding clear. the ball, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's holding the ball. Or I mean, dropping that, the ball. That's... Uh, he, he threw it away, or he put the ball on the, away away from himself immediately before the tackle, which is incorrect disposal. And Kevin Bartlett can tell us all about that in his game over the weekend. So Matera, from 50 metres, he gets good distance with the kick, but it's just offline. In the finish, just sneaking through for a behind. So his first score of the match. Just felt maybe that... Uh, the tackle might have forced the ball. Well, if that's the case, Rob, I reckon it's play on because yep. the tackle was laid, and that's it. Knights beautifully through the centre. Rob Botus, 80 metres from goal, delivers. Holland worked underneath it by McIntosh. Cut to ground, power, good tackle, McKenna. Miranda back to Bowden. Oh, he's missed it. Sprayed it. A behind. You can just feel, Tim, the pressure of the match has gone up a screw, hasn't it? And that puts more pressure on the players when they deliver the ball, even when they don't have a lot of pressure on them. As we saw Ron Botus there, had plenty of time to spot the kick in front of Holland, but just put it on top of his head, really kicked to the advantage of McIntosh. Waterman, clever. Do you reckon the crowd plays a part here? I mean, Richmond have got fantastic support here tonight, and West Coast obviously outnumbered. Well, the emotion does play a factor, but I think also the fact that the West Coast Eagles have got two injured players on the interchange. In a tough, absorbing game like this, it can be critical to be able to bring on fresh players late in the game. Turnbull to Kemp to Gehrig. Fantastic tackle by Kellaway. Beautiful handball. Knights lopes away. One bounce. Two. He could kick this. Three. He's 54 metres out. Gives it all he's got. Going. Going. Touched. Oh, shades of the final against the Bombers in 95 when he split them in half. Robbo. Oh, it's exciting football, oh. isn't it? I mean, uh, Friday night at the MCG... And the combatants are having a really good crack at this. Kick in. Djakovic at the back. Prescott. Little handball. Harrison. Campbell like tackled. Gone. Well done there by Crabb. He's got to be rewarded, doesn't he? Well, the umpire obviously felt that he didn't have a prior opportunity before he was tackled. And it all depends on how long he's had the footy for. Takes the, Campbell takes the footy. Tackle lay very quickly. I'm comfortable with that not being paid uh, or not the tackler not being rewarded because there wasn't a lot of time, Robbo. I'll tell you what, Crab would feel a bit stiff, John, yep. because earlier in the quarter he was penalised for very, very much the same situation. Yep. The kick towards half forward, Lewis has a chance, but swooping on it is Kemp. He has a bit of a look, kicks into the pocket, brilliantly gathered by Gary, but he's well held there by Callaway. Yeah. It's been a great battle oh, between those two players, Callaway and Gary. It's all like the puncher and the counter puncher, isn't it? In this, tight, in this tight, con in this tight con uh, competition down here, as uh, Brendan Gale has come off the ground, Young Ottens has got a big job now in the ruck. Well, Thanks, Dip. a struggle for possession across the half-forward line. It'll spill out. Peter Matera, tackled by Bullis, but he's able to break away and then squeezes a little kick in towards half-forward. This player has played a game, Matthew Knights. He runs away with a footy, 21 possessions. Shares it with Campbell. Campbell on centre wing after two bounces. Has a bit of a look. Left foot kick to the uh, slot zone again. In front, Holland. Daffy crashed. Good play by Miranda. Tries to get it out wide for Daffy. Strong at the football, Holmes. Gathered oh. by Powell. Oh. Goal, no. He hooks the kick. He might have missed everything, has he? Matera and Powell, the antagonist, at it. He's missed everything. And it's a free kick. He really did the hard work, didn't he? Oh. He got himself a bit of time. All he had to do was steady and finish. 
And Bruce, you spoke to Ben about five minutes ago. Oh. Pressure. The pressure just yeah. goes on the individual. And Powell's had one of those nights, hasn't he? He's missed a few chances. He gave one goal away to Ron Botus, but he's lacking match practice. Bowden comes away on his wrong side. Good kick. Front of the square. Oh, gee, going well early with Jakovic. No free kick. Holland. Holland still. Bowden, good play. West Coast Reed, who's been terrific, I reckon, on Daffy. Little touch by... Uh, Richmond out of play. I say no free kick on Jakovic. I'm not suggesting it could, should be one, but that's a really interesting facet yeah. of the game. There's Gale. Now let's have a look. He goes there early. is no doubt yeah. that's, that is a realistic attempt to spoil, yeah. and uh, you know Jakovic should be encouraged to do that, yeah. not penalised. Eyes never left the footy today. It was a terrific effort. Snap by Holland. Is it there? He's just missed. Well, the Eagles are one of the best teams of the 90s and soaking this up but boy they're taking some heat now aren't they well they play their percentages in defense as well as any side in the competition there's no doubt that Mick Malthouse has built this side primarily on defense and then everything flows after that so in a tight situation there's probably not too many sides in the competition that play these sorts of games better. Well, Richmond doing well because uh, in that uh, little clip before the game with Jeff Gershon, he said that uh, in a couple of games this year, they could have fallen right away. And there were positives to come out of it because they've been able to hang in there and not get beaten badly. So they are in front in this game at the moment. They lead by 10 points. The kick by Turner it goes across the half-back line. Bauer has the football. He can go down the ground player on his own is Holland he's come a long way down a long long way down he's marked behind the wing his kick will land close to half forward Miranda couldn't take the mark gathered by Kemp they may come bounding back here the Eagles the kick for Waterman Waterman with possession number 26 has been a good player but the kick is not good it's been marked well by Callaway right on his defensive 50 meter line sweeps the handball out wide Bauer Bauer's kick to left half forward Jakovic the punch from behind. McIntosh had to get up from the ground and contest again. Harrison looked as though the opportunity was going to be there, but the boundary umpire will throw it in. And Joel Bowden's been picked up by Drew Banfield. Now, I don't know whether Joel Bowden's actually tiring, but he's playing in the 10-yard square in the forward line, 10-meter square in their forward line. Maybe he's just trying to try and expose uh, Banfield for pace and get on a long lead. Ottens, Kemp, looking for a free. Braun runs it to the line. Still in play. Still there. Prescott over the top oh. of Kemp. Clever. Had a terrific match. Kicks the ball inside uh, the centre wing. Gehrig and Kellaway. What a duel it's been. Gasper couldn't quite get hold of it. Gehrig tried to get a little toe poke away. It was well played by Rogers in the end. Who got it to Bauer. Bauer's handball. Now Prescott's got to be quick. Little one inside. It's good. Ottens can go away now. Now can he deliver? Ottens goes towards the pocket. Very wide for Gale. Not a good kick by Ottens. His kicking has let him down tonight. Bruce, uh, Mitchell Wallace just come off the ground. The, uh, the doctors are now looking at his knee. Gee. And nothing too serious. I, I just think because of his second game back, could Thanks, be Jim. stiff. Thanks, he was Jim. actually starting to look a little bit tired there in that third term. Robbo, you're pointing frantically there. Do you reckon Gale went to the wrong spot? I or? think he could have put a lot of pressure on them by kicking to the square. Yep. Gale at the back, takes it out of the air. Little kick doesn't get far. Holmes. Like this block. Yep. Daffy after him. Holmes belts it out wide. Goes towards a half back. Not quite out. Morrison and Turner. And now it's out of play. So it's 66 to 56. With plenty of time. I say plenty of time. Still more than two minutes remaining for a goal on the way in this third quarter. And there's some terrific matchups out there too. Gehrig and Kellaway. We've already spoken about that. But also the young guns, the young Turks. Gardner and Ottens in the ruck. And that's a fascinating duel between those two young fellows. Chance here for the Eagles to break away from half-back. Forced to kick with his right foot was Banfield. Back towards the middle of the ground. Prescott couldn't take the mark. Well done by Stone. A real contest now with the football under there. Gee, yeah. It looks as though Ooh. it might be Holmes, is it? Tell you what, Kempe's flattened on the other side of the ground. It's a pretty interesting uh, bump a moment ago. He was... too. Bruce, just an update on Mitchell White. Looks like Ooh. his hamstring, his right hamstring. He's been uh, knocked unconscious. Just watch this. Here's, Ke here's Kempe. Scotty Turner. Whoa. Good old-fashioned shirt front. Yeah, Gary O'Donnell knows all about that too. Yep. In that final a couple yep. of years ago. On, on this ground. He's in a lot of trouble though, Kemp. Yes, he's... And you don't like to see that. You don't like to see a player in obvious distress. Now, what we have to remember, fellas, is that if there's contact to the head, it should be paid as a free kick. Well, play has gone on. It's at centre-half forward for the Eagles. Matthew oh, Knight's a lovely little kick. 
to Scotty Turner. Handball out wide. We see Dean Kemp in trouble in the hands of the trainers in the box. The kick to full forward has been marked by Morrison for the West Coast. Now, would play stop here, John? Yeah, the call for a stretcher. So, uh, now, obviously, the umpires can't respond until the trainers actually call for the stretcher. So, uh, even though the crowd probably thinks that play should finish earlier, until the, the trainers actually instruct the umpire that they've called for the stretcher, the umpires won't stop play. But bad, Kempe looks in a lot of trouble. A bad blow because he's been a very important player for the West Coast Eagles. He's had 18 possessions, has kicked a goal, and with a, over a quarter left, only a minute left in this third term, we see Dean Kemp go down. And, and Robbo, a real ball player. You know, he, My word. The only thing he chases is the leather. You know, and How would uh, you see this? We've had well, I reckon, this, I reckon there's contact from the head. I, I think there's contact in the head, and if there's contact in the head, it should be a, a free kick paid against Turner at the very least. That's so it, certainly, it certainly was high. The ball, was, the ball was there, though, wasn't well, it? Well, I mean, the, the ball the, was in that, in yeah, that area. The, the ball's there, so I'm not suggesting anything else. But, yep. but the, I mean, the charging rule's nothing to, to talk about. If it's a free kick, is it reportable? But, well, it, it, whether it's reportable or not depends on whether the umpire considers Kempe expected that contact. Yeah. And that's why Tim was mentioning the ball was very close. If a player is that close to the footy, you would think that he's expecting contact, contact from all and sundry. Yeah. So, yeah. so if he's hit very hard when he's that close to the ball, then it is fairly difficult to argue that he wouldn't have expected the contact. So that takes it out of the charging rule. It is difficult to see. I mean, we had John Lyons talking about this during the week, didn't he, about video replays and everything. But uh, it just looked as if uh, it was a hard bump and then a bit extra on the end of it. Yeah, well, yeah. well he, he seemed to really throw his head back. Yeah. His head really hit the turf extremely yeah. hard. Yeah. But already, Jeff Geeshan has brought Broderick onto the ground. Kemp kept Broderick quiet in the early part of the game, took him off. The young fellow, Ron Botas, came onto the ground, played on Kemp. Now, Jeff Gushin has already sprung the chain, so he's taken Rod, uh, Ron Botas off the ground and brought Broderick back onto and the ground. Tim, can, can I just say this? This is a terrible feeling. I've been in this position myself. Um, luckily, the one that I recall, the player wasn't hit in the head. But when an umpire sees a player injured that seriously in a passage of play that he's been controlling, and you know that he's, he's well, it can't be looks out cold, doesn't he? He is. Um, well, well, they're not even then, going to take him through the interchange. Yeah, then then that, is a, that, that is a real concern for an umpire because obviously the last thing he wants to be in charge of is a passage of play where a player is seriously hurt. Cousins, worst fall, both injured. Now Kempe, they're getting low to you. What a great player that boy is, Dean Kemp. And the Tigers, while this has been going on, they've had a spell and they've had a bit of a look at who's on the ground and they've made two changes off the bench. Ron Botas has come onto the ground for Gale and Broderick was back onto the ground. Kick away by, uh, might have been Morrison in yes, the finish out wide yeah. to a two-on-one, which favoured Richmond, but well gathered by Turnbull. The kick not good, though. Over on the full, Richmond by 10 points with less than a minute left. And I think Chad Morrison will be the player that the West Coast Eagles actually push up into the midfield to take Kemp's position. Broderick inside to Harrison. Harrison delivers very long, but not particularly well. Jakovic, good effort by Ottens against the flow. Miranda, they're onto him quickly. Bowden, Powell on a good spot for a left footer as he belts the ball to the front of the square underneath McIntosh. Rambotis could never get out. It reads a really good tight check of the back. And McIntosh delivers to Gardner. We're deep now into this third quarter. There's not too much time. Gardner goes very wide and gets to Morrison. Morrison, who was so potent up forward in the first half. A little uh, bootstrap are taken by Waterman. Waterman kicks it to 50. Missed by Kellaway. Gehrig's after it. Lewis provides for Shepard. Oh, Gehrig missed it. I reckon he could have run all the way. Still with Gehrig. Centering ball. Important here. Broderick's got a handle on it. Handball OK. Siren sounds. Richmond fans are pretty happy. They had the best of the quarter. In fact, the Eagles didn't get a goal. Richmond only got two. But it was enough to give them a little break. Not much in it, but handy. And the Kemp blow could be a body one for West Coast. Well, they're unbalanced now, the West Coast Eagles. At the end of that quarter, they had three tools on the ground. They had Gardner, uh, Grigic, and also Turnbull. Three players that they wouldn't normally have on the ground at the same time. So, obviously, they're down to just a couple of fit men. And that's going to be a telling factor, I believe, in a game that's been very hard physically. And it's also been a hard endurance game, too, because we've seen a lot of one-on-one -on -one football all over the ground. We see Mickey Moldhouse talking to Robert Wiley there. He certainly has his worries at the moment. But it was a brilliant quarter of football. Richmond 9-12, 66.
leading by 10 points the West Coast Eagles, 8-8, 56. See a very healthy crowd here for the Friday night match between Richmond and the West Coast and a three-quarter time the Tigers lead by 10 points. It's been close all night. They led by 10 at quarter time, was all square at half time. So they lead us back to 10 points, 66 to 56. The Mitre 10 competition tonight, that's a good one, wasn't it? On Ben Cousins, who hasn't had much luck himself tonight. But good luck to those people, $1,000 worth of profit. Seven Sports, hope you're enjoying this match in the 1998 Coca-Cola AFL Premiership season. Well, what a great game we've got here, fellas. Uh, it's going to be tight, and it's going to be a terrific program on Sunday. Rex's footy panel. The uh, entire crew with him. A new look show for 1998. They're the Times, Perth, Adelaide, and Melbourne, and Sydney this Sunday morning for the footy panel. Mark Doran's down there with the Dipper. Mark, uh, Dean Kemp situation. Hard to get too close to the Eagles, uh, Bruce, as you know, but we did manage to find out that Dean Kemp did go down. He was just dazed originally, but then his eyes started spinning 360s, as the trainers tell me, and he was knocked out cold for a little while. He's uh, in the rooms now and has woken up, but as you can see, it didn't look good. Uh, over that side of the ground, they're not sure whether he was taken high or not or whether it was illegal or not, but he did go down hard, and they are very worried about Dean Kemp, Dipper. Yeah, not good news for the Eagles there, because Mitchell White is also off the ground uh, with uh, Worsfold and also Benny Cousins, so yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the bench is not looking to, uh, too flash for uh, for the Eagles. But Jeff Keeshan, all um, Richmond eyes were on Jeff. Uh, he just said, listen, great quarter, fantastic pressure. You started strong, now you've got to finish strong. They're, they're a very good side, and... Uh, just keep going the hard work you've been doing. Positive character, isn't he? Absolutely. Thanks, fellas. Stakes are high here. This is a very important match. I know it's early days, but they're two and two, these two clubs. West Coast wouldn't expect to win a whole heap of games in Melbourne this year. A couple, three, four, maybe, but boy, they've got their chance here. They had their chance against North in the opening match. Couldn't quite do it. They need this, and the Tigers, boy, do they need this one. So a big last quarter coming up. And there's the bounce coming down again. And they're still very tall, the West Coast Eagles. Gardner in the centre of the ground. They've got Turnbull at centre-half forward. And they've got Ilya Grickich down in the forward pocket. And he's going to be run around by Turner, who's already taking him up onto the centre wing part of the ground. If we're back to 21, which we've had last year and the year before, 22 for the first time, they'd be down to 17 men. Or maybe someone would be standing in the goal square for the Eagles, not doing a whole lot. And there's probably a couple of players out there on the ground now who are carrying injuries too. Not badly enough that they have to go off the ground, but certainly they'd have some sore spots too. So it's going to be a contest or the battle of the fittest by the final siren here. So Matthew Knights again have a long talk to umpire Peter Carey at three-quarter time. He's there for a fair while, and you just wonder about the value in it all, but the uh, coaches keep asking their captains to do it. Prescott, inside 50, a bouncing ball. Holmes kept his eye on it, well done, and then delivers out wide, wants Matera, Bauer with him, and also Gardner. Matera couldn't hold Bauer off, and then uh, Bauer came down. Gardner with a bounce, comes away, doesn't quite get it where he wants. Gale cuts it off, and those little nuances are so important. Gee, John, you, you said, calling, is look, this a free kick or not? Yeah, look, I reckon it is. And Peter Matera actually looks at the umpire moments after this, expecting to give away the free kick, but doesn't hear the whistle and uh, thanks his lucky stars. He's had a few injuries, Matera. He's probably lost a yard. I mean, normally nobody would be any quick. I know Bauer's fast, but Bauer beating for speed there, and that caused him uh, to bring them both down. Now, Tawny gets it in short from Campbell. Mistakes, Tim, in the last quarter are just so vital that you don't make them because they can often cost you a match. Tawny kicks the ball inside uh, half forward now. Djakovic brought to ground, able to get it. Reed, who we've talked about now, free kick is it a throw against Djakovic. He'll be unhappy here. Kellaway's got it. Djakovic has had a night to forget. Go short. Daffy, he had a quieter. In fact, he only had one kick in the third quarter. He had 10 in the first, seven in the second, and one in the third. Gee. Well, it the, was a throw. It the, was a throw. Yeah, the clenched fist has to propel yeah. the ball. Well, this is a big kick, isn't it? He's within range. Ten points in front. The man of the moment, Daffy. Goes for the hook to get more distance. Coming back, not enough, a behind. Tim, what if the goal umpire put up two hands then, Tim? I would have... Uh, well, you, you would have jumped out of the, <laughs> the commentary box, wouldn't you? You'd see a tense Richmond bench there. On and the run, you'd back him, wouldn't you? But uh, the deliberate shot trying to... Like, he seems to be able to kick better goals or longer goals on the run than he does. And he ran off to the yeah, side. He yeah, he ran off to the side, tried to screw the ball back. Kick Obviously in. feels more comfortable doing that. Kick in marked by Simmons. 
67 plays 56 it's uh, 11 points the advantage for the Tigers Simmons indecisive then goes wide very wide to Gehrig Gehrig is at uh, left half back Banfield trying to make position he goes in the Lewis direction falls to the ground look Richmond have the numbers back there a free kick against Lewis he dragged Tawny after the marking contest fairly straightforward and Chris Lewis didn't think he gave that one away Tawny short to Powell interesting battle out there between Turner and also Grigich too Grigich wants to play down in the square Turner just turns and runs him back up the ground punch from behind McIntosh kick off the ground by Daffy he surely mops this up doesn't he on the run Nick Daffy's goal for Richmond Daffy it's a big margin of the match so far 17 points Eagles have got to get the next one 10-13 to 8-8 Gale getting over the top of him though was Gardner. What a game he's played. Simmons out wide. Bad bounce there for uh, Crabb. Taken by Gasper. The break's going for the Tigers here. Rogers, he loves to run. Bauer urges his on. Rogers delivers the half forward. Knight tries to work the position. Waterman runs it over the line. And on that occasion though, Simmons just trying to give a handball that he didn't have to actually make. And that's where the turnover occurred as we go down to Mark Doran on the boundary line. Well, Tim, the Eagles doctor has come out of the rooms and says, yes, Dean Kemp has woken up and he won't go to hospital. It's a concussion. No, there's no doubt about that. And uh, you'd expect him to miss a couple of games, but he's not going to hospital, so that's some good news. Thanks, Mark. So Ken Fitch having a chat there to Mark. and uh, Well, well, that's good news it is good, for the Kemp family Terrific, back yeah. in Western Australia and all the Western Australian fans too because he certainly is one of those great players of the AFL competition and nobody likes to see anybody leave the ground on a stretcher. He's universally admired, isn't he? That's for sure. Roderick, Simmons. Bruce, we spoke about uh, the reserves match. Tim uh, and I agree that uh, sometimes you can get a bit of a feel for the, how the way the reserves play. Richmond reserves won by 117 points earlier tonight against North Melbourne. And their seniors certainly have taken a leap out of their book. They've been tenacious. www.afl.com.au is the official AFL website. If you want all the information on that, Reed kicks back to centre wing. Gale belts it away. Knight's looking for it. Yes, he's gathered. Waterman closing. Oh. Knight's kick is good. Daffy's got it. Now, he didn't play on, surely. No. Uh, the umpire pulling the man on the mark back to exactly the spot that he wanted him to. Peter Matera just trying a little bit of gentle persuasion to uh, convince Daffy that he had played on when, in fact, he hadn't. Trying to get Nick Daffy to rush it. Just, it's, going bit, it's going to be a big kick, doesn't it? Well, just a little closer he was out here in front of the member stand a few minutes earlier. Tried to get the extra distance. Didn't get the accuracy. So from 50 metres directly in front, he's kicked wide, punched away from Holland by McIntosh for a boundary throw. And it's about 20 metres around from the Richmond goal. They have the advantage. It's a 17-point lead with 15 minutes left in the game. Right forward pocket, the ruck contest. Turnbull taken out of it by Holland. Ball spills there for Reed. Gets his foot to it. Simmons punched forward by Campbell for the Tigers. Out in the area there of McKenna and Miranda. And the boundary umpire will have to throw it in once again. You just get the feeling now that West Coast Eagles are just holding on, don't you? They look a little bit tired. They don't have the flexibility now to run the players through the bench. They've got a tall lineup out there. And it's going to be very difficult for them now just to mount an attack. Great shepherd by Simmons. Crabs kick marked by Gale after the Simmons shepherd. Yes, they're down to 18 West Coast and they've lost one of their absolute best players in camp and a goal kicker in Cousins. They lost him early. Gale back to half forward. Reed, Daffy, boundary throw in. So the Tigers with a break here. The good thing about that, Bruce, from a coaching perspective, is Mickey Moldhouse has got a number of young players out there. Holmes, Crab, Reed. Gardner. Gardner. They're all young kids, and this is great experience for them. Waterman just laid it off to Simmons, couldn't quite get hold of it. And again, oh. holding the footy against uh, Reed. So the free kick to Campbell at centre wing. Tigers going for the kill here. As we see the replay there of uh, the free kick. Meanwhile, the kick's gone to centre half forward and play on court. And a throw against West Coast again. We saw Jakovic earlier, and this time. Gasper's got the free kick. 
Gasper goes short to the pocket to Miranda. Couldn't quite hold it. It bounced off Ottens. Back to Ottens. Handball away. Miranda. Matera did well. Back to Ottens. Back towards Miranda. Almost out of play. All over the top of Miranda there was Matera. And forces the ball out of play for a boundary throw in. Richmond lead 10-13 to 8-8. Eight, eight. Yes, well, important seconds ticking away here for both sides. Richmond have the advantage. And the Eagles just have to kick the score. And they don't look like doing it at this stage. They really haven't gone into a positive goal-scoring area for any of the early minutes of this last quarter. Daffy tackled. The football is there, but the umpire has decided on a bounce. Desperate Tigers striving for their third victory of the season. Bounce about 30 metres from their goal. Ottens to Powell. Snapshot by Powell. Not a bad kick. He thinks it's a goal. But it's not. Two behinds against his name. Good roving of the pack. That's a good tap then by Ottens too. He's nicely palmed into the path of Powell. Oh, gee, that must have been close. The reaction of the player was positive. Goal umpire having nothing of it. So McIntosh to kick it back in for the Eagles. Comes to the members' side. Gets it well outside the defensive 50. Over the back, Gardner. Taken away, McKenna. Simmons close to the line. Kicks it down the line. He may have hooked it a little bit too far. He has. It is out of bounds on the full of free kick to Matthew Knights. He probably forced the error there because he was in the spot that Simmons probably wanted to go short to. And it was Knights who was in that posse. Raking kick, long and high. Back to 50. No mark taken, handled by Holland, okay. Daffy, good kick, long kick to the goal square. Wonderful play, McIntosh, to take the mark under pressure from Miranda. She was a good kick by Daffy. It was, it was a courageous mark then by McIntosh. <laughs> it wasn't it to actually go for the mark rather than to try and spoil. I suppose he figured that it was Miranda that he was contesting against. And Waterman. clearly taller than him. Waterman used his body. Banfield couldn't take it clearly. Prescott to try and run him down. Prescott's got hold of it. The signs are good for the Tigers. Back to Campbell. Back to Prescott. Prescott the centre half for Djakovic at the back takes the mark. It's been one of the quietest nights I think we've seen from Djakovic in ages. He's really had very little influence on the game. Maybe a big last 20 minutes could help. Waterman got it from Djakovic. Wide to Morrison. Uh, rather to Braun, I should say. It's centre wing. Tigers are 18 points in front of here. Eagles need a couple in a hurry. Gerrick held on to. Doesn't get a free kick. Kellaway comes away. Handball good. Knights has found space all night. Lopes as usual. Then delivers with a long ball to 50. Miranda is target against McKenna. Bouncing ball. Boundary throw in. And West Coast really struggling here to get a fast half forward. Well, they haven't taken the ball into their 50 metre zone in this last quarter yet. And we're almost at the 12 minute mark. Tell you what, you take your hat off to Duncan Calloway, don't you? I mean, he gets all the big jobs. And uh, Fraser Gehrig, who was looming as a threat, he's had a, quite a few possessions himself, Gehrig. He's kicked one goal. But Calloway, he's just like a dog on a bone. Braun not able to gather the ball. So he, he actually goes better against those marking type of players, though, doesn't he? Last week we saw him matched up with Nathan Buckley. And I thought Nathan Buckley probably had the better of him. He certainly does suit a player. Well, not so much suit a player, but he does play better on a player that's actually a marking type of player. Oh, spectacular work by Miranda. Magnificent leap and mark. <laughs> play of the night so far. That's why it's the best ball game in the world, Robbo. It is sensational, John. Super mark, isn't it? Against a great opponent, too. He he got his lift from nowhere. It just looked like it was going to be a contest, and then all of a sudden, he's standing almost on the shoulder of Guy McKenna. Sensational, wasn't it? That was just a brilliant bit of work. <laughs> he's he kicked two goals. Gee, Robbo, this would be a player of the, play of the night if he drills this one. Oh, yeah, well, I'd, I'd back him here from... Uh, he's about 35, maybe 40 metres, straight in front. Kicks for goal. Golapo moves across. He has kept it off. Well done, Miranda. The goal will be talked about for a long time when people talk about big moments in AFL football. Richmond four goals in front. Miranda, outstanding performance. Nearly takes another one. McKenna, gee, he'd grit his teeth and be determined here. Goes hard. Hip and shoulder was good by Campbell. The Tigers look to have the bit between the teeth now. Simmons out wide. Crab there with Tawny. Got him. He's got him. 
Well, it's all going for the Tigers, isn't it? Yeah, that little handball uh, when you're under the pump like that just isn't enough to convince the umpire you've disposed of the ball legally. Djakovic read it better then than Harrison. Comes away on the left foot. Bangs it high. Back to centre wing. Gale underneath it. And the Tigers have got the answers. Well, he's just getting back and filling in the hole now, Fraser. Gary, perhaps he should have gone just to try and knock the ball and create a, a crumb. Ironically, he cramped up and couldn't take his kick and was able to handball the ball off. Broderick out wide to Bullis. They can't get too cute here. Bullis, still the ball in play. Now, he doesn't want to trap it under. I reckon he could be in trouble, though the West Coast player took it off him. And it's going to be a bounce. Official attendant. Here's Marinda's at mark. Oh. And we'll get his reaction to the goal. He reckon, I think he thinks it's on the nose. Yeah, he didn't like the kick, did he? He's happy. <laughs> 34,837 people here. Fantastic turn up, really. Roderick with the ball, kicks it across the full back line. Turner, he's a favourite player with the Tiger fans. Campbell, out in front of Tawny, gathers the ball, knocks it to the advantage of Gaspar, under pressure from Banfield. Over the top of Grigic. And they really do look like uh, followers now, the West Coast Eagles. You feel that they may, their body language is telling you that they may have conceded this match. 24 points is the advantage in favour of Richmond. We've got nine minutes left, but they just haven't been able to kick a real succession of goals. Tap clear for Morrison over his left shoulder. Inside the forward 50, Gary takes the mark from behind Callaway. Goes with the right foot, right across the ground to centre half forward proper. Braun has taken the mark. Gasper just a little late on the scene. And Braun trying to tell the umpire that uh, that's where I'd like the man to stand. <laughs> he's an interesting player, isn't he, Fraser Gary? When he's matched up in a marking situation, he often doesn't jump off the ground. He likes the player to actually move back onto him. He knows he has his height advantage over Kellaway. And I think that's sort of where he believes he's going to be able to gain possession of the ball. Well, Braun goes short into the pocket. The mark is taken by Lewis. Something's happened behind the play, from the fans. Matera may have been in a bit of strife there. The umpire having a word to Peter Matera. Back where the ball came from. But the mark has been paid to Lewis. He's in the left forward pocket. So favouring his right foot. Certainly will get the distance. Can he kick his first goal for the game? No. He's kicked across the face. And the Tigers will rush behind for the Eagles. So it's not one of Chris Lewis's be better games. Well, the foot always follows the ball, Robbo. And we're right behind that kick then by Chris Lewis. The ball was dropped out to the side. The foot followed. And that's exactly where the kick went. Chaffee coming on for the Tigers. A good mark out wide to Gasper. He's been valued for money since crossing, hasn't he? There's some uh, high-numbered recruits here when you look at the uh, around the ground with Gardner, a number one, Gasper, a number one, Otten's a number two, and talked about as being number one, and they all look the goods, don't they? Gasper kicks the ball, what, and Banfield was number one. And the year that Gasper was taken number one, Fraser Gehrig was taken number 16. 16. West Coast first choice. Here's uh, Campbell. Campbell to full forward. Well done by uh, McKenna. They've got to attack now have to take some chances if they've got it in them. Wide wants Stone, Matera, maybe he can take a couple on. He just hasn't had any penetration tonight, Peter Matera. Came into the match under an injury cloud. Simmons free to Mark, paid. It'll come back to Simmons. Free kick paid, Bruce. Right. Glenn Jakovic is just not his night, is it? Just not seeing it right. So Simmons from set a half back, 11, 14 to 8, 9. There's still enough time, but oh, it's hard to imagine. That's the problem, isn't it? No, it's just not flowing for them, Bruce. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Richmond, well, they only need to get one back, I'd say, and they'll snuff it out. Morrison has the football. He's just forward of centre wing. He's allowed to play on, so he's going to kick the ball to within scoring distance for the Eagles. No, Mark McIntosh has got it. Little kick by Ashley McIntosh. Forces a throw in in the left forward pocket about five or six metres around from the behind post. Well, they've had to try something down there. McIntosh has now gone deep into the forward line and Turnbull's gone to full back.
but the West Coast Eagles have just struggled to get into their offensive 50 in the second half of this game. They've only taken in there about eight times, nine times in the, in, since half time, which is a very low statistic. Haven't kicked a goal since half time. Still a struggle there for a clean possession in the forward pocket for the West Coast. Waterman, Lewis, going to get run down. Little kick, not bad. It did go the required distance, according to the umpire, and the mark has been paid to Simmons. So if he kicks a goal, he can bring the margin back to 17 points. Quick bit of arithmetic there, Robert. Well, there is enough time. There's six minutes left. There's always enough time. And if you can get the ball away from the centre, put the pressure back on the opposition. He has done so far. He's kicked the goal and has given the Eagles just a little stiff the half time deep into the last quarter but they've still got some hope here Campbell Rogers belts it away good chase here Jim Reed did really well then against Chaffee back to home so two 18 year olds combining Matura probably should have taken the mark made a bit of a meal of it handball to Simmons Simmons had kicked the goal to McIntosh this is interesting McIntosh 60 meters out We've seen him the pass run around the man on the mark in situations like this. Inside, needs a mark. Didn't come off. Knights did well. Taken by uh, Holmes. Back to Gardner. Gardner 55 metres out. Gets underneath it. Kicks it to the square. Garrett. One hand. Couldn't take it. Morrison still in play. Banfield under pressure. Handball back. The young fella. He's gone for it. And hit the post. Crap. Well, that really would have made it interesting, wouldn't it? McIntosh giving them some spark up uh, forward. They've got hold of the ball. That's the most important thing. They are now controlling the play. Well, they've been able to free up a couple of players. Simmons has been good too. Just going for Stiff. the boomerang. He's been a little quiet, but by gee, that would have done his confidence. There's no, plenty of good, wouldn't it? If he'd have been able to sneak that one through. The kick in, not quite marked by Prescott. Pressure applied by Braun. Ball spills Campbell just to his own advantage. He did get that onto his boot quickly. Braun in towards Simmons. Simmons down the ground. Good kick. They've got players on their own. Waterman's been their best player all night. Can he kick a goal? Chris Waterman goes for goal. Just misses. Well, they probably not meant to snatch this because a couple of chances. They've hit the post on one or two occasions and they just can't, can't quite sneak one here. Just look at Chad Morrison there, just protecting the ball carrier. His first reaction then was to go and provide a shepherd there for Waterman, and that's good team play. 15 points is the advantage with Richmond. Four and a half minutes left. The kick in goes well outside the defensive 50. It's punched back close to that area. Lewis and Broderick. Maybe a free kick against Lewis a little high, the tackle. And frustratingly, Chris Lewis just bangs his fist into his thighs. Disappointed man. The free kick is with Broderick. Have another look at it. It looked pretty straightforward. Yep. Broderick's kick out wide. Well marked out there by Harrison. It's a good stretch, wasn't it, Robbo? 80 to 65. Harrison at half back. Richmond still in control, but uh, West Coast, to their credit, are coming back. Close to the line, a boundary throw in. Great crowd here. 34,800. That's a very good turnout. In the opening match of the year, when North Melbourne played West Coast here, we had 27,000. So Richmond's drawing potential. Or actuality really is a very very good they've been involved in the two matches that have had over 70,000 this year Campbell back to Gale Gale at center wing as Robbo said one goal here would close everything off kicks the full forward ricochets off Turnbull well done by Stone kept his eye on it Matura ran into him Matura not having a good night he's holding the footy that's it I reckon and 50 meters if he's not careful can't slap it out in the face that Well, he doesn't get 50. Is the tackle too high? Yeah, well, we can't. Over the we, it, it certainly looks like it, uh, but we aren't, we aren't in a fantastic spot to see it. But the, the, the tough thing about that call is he, at no stage was he really clear. No. You know, he's, at and, no stage did he really have a clear opportunity to get rid of the ball. And you really should give the benefit of the doubt to the player who's making the play and has the ball, shouldn't you? Yeah, I agree with that, Tim. Yep. This bloke could kick a ball too. So Bowden maybe to finish it off. So, might have been a bit tough on Matura there. He was uh, just so frustrated. 
just hasn't been able to penetrate tonight in any stage. He looks restricted. Bowden from 50. Mark taken by Glenn Jakovic in the back pocket. Right on the line, basically. 80 to 65. So West Coast running out of time now. Stone underneath it. Matera working it towards the boundary. So he's kept going here to his credit, Matera. Good on him. Couple of bounces. Third bounce. Beautiful kick towards Banford. Well done by Gasper to Gale to Kellaway. Kellaway took a punt. He came from the full back line to assist. Made it three on one. Now Rogers back to Bowden. Bowden from the middle of the ground. Kicks towards full forward. At the back, Jakovic. Swooped on by Miranda. Gathered by Holmes. Couldn't quite control the footy. McKenna out wide. Broderick swoops on it. Little kick into the pocket. Jakovic and Harrison. Ball spills for Waterman. Knight. Still a chance for Richmond. Powell. Holmes to Jakovic. Jakovic has got time to steady. Then the little left foot kick is all right. He's found Morrison. Not enough time, surely now, for the West Coast Eagles. And Matera has the football just behind centre wing. Short kick is all right. It's been marked by Turnbull. But they're a long way from home, and they need too many. But... Uh give them credit the Eagles they've kept coming here against all the odds down on manpower but the Tigers well they've made the running all night Kellaway's handball free kick coming back for a push or throw off in this instance though I think Gardner's playing in the wrong position he was up the ground Gale had already moved into defense to become a spare man he really has to get down there with Gale and just create a contest with Gale just make Gale a bit more honest so that he can't just drift a lot across there on his own Kellaway soaking up some time Kicks the ball wide into the boundary. Defensive tactics. McIntosh has had some touches up forward. Back to Matera. He's getting a lot of kicks late in this match. Kicks the ball inside 50. From the side, the belt away by Tawny. Gale delivers from uh, the back pocket to centre wing. Big fly there at the back pull. free kick to Lewis against yep. Broderick. Lewis held by Broderick clearly then, so uh, he'll be happy to have got one. So Chris Lewis, 50, 50 metres And a 50 metre penalty for the ball not being delivered back to Lewis on the full, I suspect. Well, he's got to go back and kick the goal now, but... Uh, We're 27 minutes into this final term. There hasn't been a lot of goals scored this quarter, so there can't be too much time on. Three behinds for Lewis, so... This for a late goal, and West Coast to tighten it up again. Get a terrific angle here. Let's see if he kicks through and kicks the goal. He's got it. So Lewis gets the goal very late. The Eagles close it up on the scoreboard. 10-11 to 11-14, but oh, well, we're running out of time now. That's for sure, 80 to 71. It's a brave performance by the West Coast Eagles considering the injuries that they have had tonight. And I noticed just then Jeff Geeshan has swung a change. He's brought more back onto the ground. That's just the fresh legs in the late start of this game. And we talked about that just after half time. And perhaps that was one position where they may be able to get an advantage over the West Coast Eagles. Reed made a dash. Uh, Reed was in the centre square. The Tigers pointed it out. And there's uh, one too many in there. So, Gale's high kick. As this game is about to uh, be concluded. Bowden Campbell over the top. Powell getting onto it. Powell still with it. This could finish it off. Powell goes, but he's got it. What a finale. Siren sounds. The Tigers' faithful roar, and the Tigers have won a big match in the MCG. Well, Chris, I wrote the final scores down about 30 seconds ago, and there were two goals kicked after I put the scores down. That's how amazing this modern AFL game is. It's just sensational. Here, Jeff, get go all your hardest, Mark. You've got Jeff with you, mate. Geese had to work hard at the end. Oh, it was really hard work. I mean, the Eagles had a lot of adversity tonight. They had a lot of players go down, go off the ground with injury, and... No, to their credit, they're a great club that a lot of pride. Even though they had those problems, they fought very hard all the way to the end. So, And you worked hard at the start. That was the big thing, wasn't it? Yeah, we'd been getting away to poor starts, and we knew that a side like the West Coast Eagles, you just can't afford to give them a start. Our boys are just terrific tonight. I mean, we, we didn't play well. We had a lot of the ball. We didn't use it very well or very effectively, but we persevered and got the points, and that's all that matters. So you are 3-2 and two now.
Yeah, well, that's a lot better than two and three, and uh, we set ourselves for that tonight, and uh, I think we can take a lot of positives from tonight in the fact that we had a lot of the ball. Just got to get a little bit more efficient, a little bit more skill into our game. We'll let you go. One more thing. What about Mark Miranda? Oh, he was terrific. I mean, he's been struggling through the week with an injury, but uh, he ruled himself to get up and just has enormous courage. And tonight, can Mark. He yeah, can Mark. And I think tonight's game was a lot of our courage, so it's good. Thanks, Keith. Well done. Thanks, uh, Mark. Uh, Jim, I think you've got Mark Marinda with you. He took one of the great marks I tonight. certainly have, uh, Bruce. Well, first, congratulations on a magnificent win, but this is the spot. You just take us through that, Mark. Oh, I just ran back with the ball and had to go for it, so I went for it and just took it, yeah. A fantastic win by the Tigers tonight. Oh, it was fantastic. You know, our supporters, you know, they're fantastic. They, you know, we lose last week by 45 points, you know, and they came out in force again. And, just fantastic. Yeah, the coach gave you a big rap, but uh, it was important to start off well today. Yeah, it was. You know, the last two games you started off badly, and um, today, you know, we come out firing, so it was great. OK, you better go. The boys are waiting for you. Well done. Great, Mark. Thanks, Dipper, with Mark Marinda. Yes, the players have waited for Mark, and uh, he's going to join them now. And the Tiger faithful, we're going to go to the rooms of the Tigers here. They are going to be walking on water, I reckon, Tim, when they leave the ground. I mean, to walk off in front of this faithful crowd, they just adore this club, don't they? They're a very emotional crowd, the Richmond crowd. They follow the team through thick and thin. They love to be there when they're winning. They hang around when they're losing. How unusual. But, <laughs> they, but they certainly love their victories, the Richmond oh, side, yeah. and they have followed faithfully already this year. You mentioned it, the 270,000-plus crowd, and the players just showing their appreciation of the crowd. That bloke leading them off, Matthew Knights, was quite brilliant tonight. Out for two matches through suspension. And you just see the value that he has to this side, don't you? When he gets back out there, his running ability. So clean, he's it? such an architect, clean. though, too. He just seems to be the playmaker for them. Looks a bit embarrassed there. Well, that's a great moment for anyone. The big win tonight. There were two winners in a while. I mean, West Coast. Oh, yeah. West Coast were so was, good, weren't they, in I think adversity? They were, they were acknowledged by the yeah. opposition coach, which, which was good. It was a terrific, uh, obvious to Jeff, I suppose. He's played, been involved in a lot of football, and I think the Eagles, the key person that was knocked out of the game, unfortunately, yeah. is Dean Kemp. Yeah. Well, they're three and two now, the Tides. It's a reasonable start. They've uh, given themselves a chance, haven't they, in 1998. They've put themselves in the picture, and that's what you've got to do. Bowden was good coming back, so there were some terrific signs long-term for Richmond tonight. They're about to sing the song. They'll give it a fair bit here. They'll give it all the gusto they can. Here we go. It's one of the best in the business, too, this it's club a good song. It's a good one. It's a stirring oh. club song, this one. Here we go, Timmy. completely over the top but enough there there's a reaction from young Powell after he kicked the last goal of a match Miranda with him the Tigers going home 12 14 to 10 11 a 15 point margin well, Richmond in the end by 15 points close all night they led by 10 all square at half time 10 to three quarter time and they prevail getting the last goal of the match right on the line well tomorrow good match here on friday night it was an excellent game it really tightened up in that second mm. half though didn't it i was looking at the inside 50s in the first half 65 times the ball went in the forward lines of both sides in the second half it was just 39 times and it really was a very tight game as we just look at the way banfield that was a critical kick actually that ball should have gone a lot wider than what it did ended up in the hands of campbell and that was one of those three quarter goals that they did kick 15 goals in the first half and second in the, and seven in the second half matthew knights who was a great player tonight with dipper dipper thanks very much bruce well uh, firstly uh, matthew great to see you back in uh, in full form and uh, your thoughts on tonight's game oh yeah dipper it's great to be back after two weeks it's been a long two weeks under suspension and uh just getting back leading the tigers at the mcg tonight was a great thrill and uh, hard fought effort we got over the line which is great now you and the coach uh, spent a bit of time after the quarter huddles just talking about uh, a few tactics to the umpires and also about the team tactics? Yeah, we're just trying to get a few things right with team tactics and 
Uh, just asking the umpires a few things about decisions, but they were pretty good on the night. And uh, me and Geese got a good relationship, and if we can keep working like that, well, it's a benefit for the team. And after a great mark of Mark Morenda's there, uh, I mean, you really pumped him up after he kicked that goal. Oh, it was inspiring by Mark because he, he was going back. He had to show a lot of courage. He was going back with a fly of the ball and uh, typified it with a great goal, and courage like that wins games. And what does this win mean for Richmond after uh, uh, beating West Coast? I mean, every side wants to beat the, uh, the Coasters. Yeah, we've had a disappointing couple of weeks. We fell in against Hawthorne, and Collingwood really smashed us here last week. So to play a side that's won two premierships in the last 10 years and, and beat them at the MCG is fantastic because they're a great professional unit. Now, I've been suspended before a couple of times. I just want to know what you've been doing the last couple of weeks to keep yourself so fit because uh, tonight you were just uh, fantastic. Well, Geese give me a couple of days off to start with to cool off differ and uh, after that I've just been working my butt off on the track and really I'm just going to use, use it as a spur to come back and play harder and uh, I started to cramp a little bit towards the end, mate, but uh, all feels well, so it's good. Now next week you go to Brisbane? Yeah, yeah they've got a big game Sunday against the Hawks, so uh, probably a lot of us will get out there and get a look at that and uh, they're tough to beat in Brisbane, but we're 3-2 now and if we can capitalise and make it 4-2 next week, it'll be great for the club. Great to see you back, Nighter, and back to you, Bruce. Thanks, uh, Dipper, with uh, Matthew Knight. Uh, terrific to see you back there. Talked about Mark Marinda, Dipper asked him about the inspiring effort here. <laughs> this was sensational, wasn't it? It was a sensational <laughs> highlight because it really came out of nowhere. You didn't think that perhaps he was going to actually launch himself into the air to take this. Got a bit of a run-up, and that was just... <laughs> A magnificent piece of aerial work. You've seen a lot of footy over there. That's one of the more unusual performances, isn't it? It was. As I said, it came out of nowhere. It wasn't a great build-up to it. And he just kept his eyes on the ball, and that's a mark that he will be remembering for a long time. And he dobbed the goal. We'll take a break, Tim. Back with more. We're going to get you a vote. Up on cricket ground, it was 12-14 to 10-11. 86-71. Three goals to Miranda. The AFL official website is www.afl.com.au. The official AFL stats with seven and also News Limited in Bayern. Well, this is always difficult, but I thought Nick Daffy's game was sensational again tonight. A little bit quiet in that third term, but very good in the last term. Waterman had a lot of the ball tonight, and also Matthew Knights, who we've already spoken about and we saw a moment ago. Dean Kemp might have been amongst them. We've been to head to golf. We've been told by uh, Mark that he's uh, regained consciousness, so that's, that's a good story. That is, he a, was good, awakened, that is a good story. Hopefully sign. not too bad. Richmond have jumped up tonight. West Coast back to 2-3. Just very briefly, Tim,